fine. I just, I got sick twice in a row, and it sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I'm recovering from a, a throat hurt fever from three days ago, and that lasted about two days. Then, right after I got better, I had, like, maybe 12 hours of feeling good before my stomach started just hurting. So now I'm dealing with that. I, I'm so sorry. That sounds awful. Yeah. But, hey, um, I'm here. I'm, I'm present. I'm happy to... Well, we're happy to have you. Hello. Hello. I need dice. Okay. I'm still down at D4. Oh no. <laughs> It will get found eventually. Did the but question? My plan. Yeah. Pardon? No, go ahead, go ahead. My plan is if A, just use a different dice set, but B, if I'm using this one and need to roll a d4, roll a d8 and divide by two if need be. That works, yeah. Yeah, hopefully your eyes find that for, before your foot does. Or Hazel's foot does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I should have this all here. I think Desi's finishing up. Get out the dice tower. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here. Uh, do you guys have questions beforehand? Just so that way I can try and help answer as much as I can. Uh, I mean, I'm at the point where I did enough research to, like, you know, make the character and understand, you know, what to roll. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like, I don't know what questions I don't know is, is where I'm at. So as they I, come up, I might. <laughs> yeah, I think Gosh. I'm the same way. My questions are probably best to come up during play. Okay. As things become relevant. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I just don't know yeah. what questions I would have. Fair enough. The only thing that uh, I am switching out from the core rules is initiative, just because cards and online don't mix. They do, yeah. but like not in this way. <laughs> we could all load up tabletop sim. I don't have that. Oh, I forgot about that. My bad. I did find a card app, but you can't do custom decks, and so it would just be like a 52 card deck and it would work, but it would also just be jumping between tabs, and that's that's tiresome. <laughs> you right. can make 52 separate tokens. I was about to say, doesn't Owlbear Rodeo have, like, a card thing? But no, that was uh, Roll20. I Roll thought 20, it... Like... I, I was looking for someone to have hopefully made a card um, extension, and no, it just doesn't exist, unfortunately. <laughs> Also, can I just say the Iron Forest? It looks like a guy looking to the like right or left, sorry, and like his brain is exposed from afar. Okay. Sorry, I just noticed that. Oh no, I I, huh. I, I see it. I kind of get it. I love how there's a face on the tree. As well. Oh, yeah, you I didn't even, a... like, zoom that far in. Well, you need a tree with a face. Yeah. 
They're great. Mm -hmm. Answer me this riddle. You will be beginning in this kind of region here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do a speed run. Fastest uh, to get to uh, the Temple of the Purple Flame. <laughs> I've uh, got a book of 11 adventures here. I can find them. <laughs> I find that. Uh, we have to start the game with a horse already on it. <laughs> yeah. How how interesting would that be? Like having a a D and D speed run. Like there there's uh um like I campaigns mean... like already set like. And you can get more familiar with it, so it's like Lost Minds of Fendelver, and it's like everyone already knows where everything is, so it's like, okay, speedrun, who can, you know, uh, defeat I mean, Bell. it sounds entertaining to watch slash listen to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's also the whole thing of like, okay, you have to also manage levels, like, mm -hmm. so you have to, like, gain experience. So it's, I know yeah. this game doesn't have levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, when, when you were first saying that, I was thinking you were meaning like almost like an Amazing Race style thing. If you've seen that show, ooh, that, that would, would also be, be yeah. <laughs> Where it's just different characters or and or different teams of characters. Nah, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking. Let's kill Strahd as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. Who who can uh, defeat uh, Bahamut in the shortest amount of time? Um, level one. Oh, that, that, that's a challenge. I don't think you're supposed to fight Bahamas. That is true. <laughs> well, there's a first. In general. Time. Yeah, they, they they don't actually have stats for well. They have aspects, but like, that's cheating. Yeah, because deities and demigods kind of messed that up. <laughs> I should, we should your... I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, I just ping Desi. Will your roommate also be joining us? Uh, it ended up that 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 wasn't didn't end up working out. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong chat. That's why it's not okay. Yeah, but there it is. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I um, I'd almost completed my sheet and then I erased it. Oh. So, so it's I cried, all good. I I cried a little bit and then I got over it. Basically. So yeah. What did that happen? May I ask? Like just now. But how? I don't know. I was in a flurry of buttons and things, and then all of a sudden it was off, and like I just did that, didn't I? Yep, I did it. But luckily, I have everything written down on sheets of paper, so I just have to refill it out. Okay. So well, that is what I'm doing right now. We're happy to help as well. It's okay. I did figure things out. I may be wrong, but I did think I got it. Just saying. I'm in the same boat. 
Need that no more. I can get rid of this. I can close. Need that. I think I've seen this map before. Uh, yeah, I, I've used it for a couple things. It's just a great map. <laughs> we love reusable maps. Oh, yeah. Okay. I say as I make an entire throne room we're never going to see again. <laughs> We are so quiet and dead concentration right now. Yep. We, we don't want to bother you. It's okay. So I am very curious about the kinds of characters you guys have made because there's a lot of fun options. There were. I... Did anybody pick Duck? I did! Yeah! I did! I totally did. So I was like... I, I went with Wolfkin. Me too! Ooh. Ooh. What's your profession? Merchant. What was that, Sarah? Knight. Knight. Okay, we have a merchant, a fighter, and a knight. Nice. I almost went fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I love the cover of the book of the just of the Duck Knight descending. Sorry, the rogue. Yeah. It's just it's so fun. That is fun.
I don't know why Albert Rodeo decided to make the really cool looking helmet for Construct instead of Paladin. Because, like, that just screams very Paladin to me. I also find it really funny that Humanoid is a sack of coins. That is funny. It's a bag of loot! I know. Where's my horse? Right, yes, horse. Trying to find a token. Andrew, how do I determine the um, strength and the agile bonus? Um, it should be on the derived ratings page. Um, there should be a. It says, "Hang on, let me let me pull up that page." Jacob, yep. I'm rubbing in the face that I'm eating banana bread. Um, right. If your strength is between thirteen and sixteen. Or your agility is between 13 and 16, your bonus is a d4. If it's higher than 17, it's a d6. What about banana bread? I'm eating it. Mom just made some. Oh, nice. Sorry, I had to rub it in. Sounds good. It is. Yeah. My brain just took what you said to me and said, nope, not gonna happen. Andrew, I think you have to repeat oh. yourself. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, I was sitting there, I'm like, Do, did I actually comprehend that or not? Okay. Is your strength between 13 and 16? No. Is it higher than 17? It's lower. Okay. If it is below 12, you gain no damage bonus. Okay. The same for the agility? Yep. They're exactly the same score, so it's fine. Okay. I'm a one week duck. That's okay. I am one week duck. But that's okay. I got other things going for me. I like to think that's done. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to save it now. <laughs> I have it in fire alpaca. Or uh, fire. Yeah. Alpaca. That works don't know what that is it's um, like it's a, a program it's a very cheap one it's a very cheap art program huh. cool i think it might even be free yeah it is that's why i have it 
I use Creed on myself, but... At some point, they just all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just in case I need to change it. Um... That's cool. I, I have never heard of this before. Uh, Nova's the one who actually turned me on to it, so... Neat. Now I just need to have skill with a stylus. Or a pen of any sort. <laughs> If you could all of a sudden be proficient in one thing, like, not the best, but, like, fairly, you know, middle of the road compared to whatever that thing is, what would you pick? Drawing. <laughs> Hands down. Math. Comprehending other languages. Alright, alright. Easily. Like, I would love to draw like, if I had the skill, I would draw art for every single NPC. I just can't. <laughs> Did I put it oh, down? trust me, that that's that's a long road, Andrew. Like, the whole uh, drawing for every NPC, it's like, oh, man, this sounds so good. And then you draw, like, the first five, and it's like, wow, it's been, like, an entire two days, and I have, like, a hundred more to go. This is, ooh. Uh, yeah. But I would love to be able to. I wish I had that skill, and I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Most, most death. Most death. I also am a glutton for fan art. Okay. And just, like, seeing my characters actually have pictures. And... Yay. See, yeah. I am a character artist, so I love character art. Mm -hmm. So, that's, like, my thing. Mm -hmm. I can't do backgrounds. I can't do much of anything else but I love figure drawing and creating crazy characters pretty good did it work okay. nope it didn't work what didn't work oh uh, well I opened it in the wrong document it needs to be opened in yeah yeah, yeah! Okay, uh, nice. I'm gonna send a screenshot of it. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, that would be better than anything else, honestly. Close that out. I have so many tabs open right now, like... Figure this out. It doesn't look terrible. Yeah. Ta da. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think I'm ready. Okay. Don't so. forget your hit points. Oh. It's just your constitution score. Easy enough. Yep. Just thought that was, you know, important to know. 
and find the damage a knife does. Yeah, I think it's like 1D something. I, I can agree with you that I'm pretty sure it is 1D something. It's a D something. <laughs> Just close it. Close it. You don't need it. A knife. Uh, One-handed range of strength. It's a D8. Durability, six. Okay. 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 Here we go then. Okay. I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase. Air. The air in your lungs is deep, it's rich. There's density. It's the world around you feels more. There's a surge of energy all around. There's stone broken out in different areas as swirling mists begin flowing through down a large gulch, rolling in and around different formations of rock and stone. This chasm, this pass, this nook. When the day began, none of you had ever seen your way here before. You'd never seen a spot like this. But times change, and through one way or another, wandering, stumbling, by edges of ground, by hearing and following the voices and the chitterings in the woods, eventually echoes come to pass, a smell of sweetness upon the air of fresh, moist dew upon the ground, with underlying elements of coal and soot and dust, all whipped up in air surrounding everything around. And soon, the town, the sounds of towns, the sounds of life, the natural world around you begins falling away, disappearing behind, and you feel weights pulling you back, pulling you back, pulling you forward, forward, and then you find yourselves standing upright, kind of reaching back maybe to catch yourselves a bit, but alone. The rocks kind of begin cracking and there's a slight rumble as some stones fall by here or there. It takes a moment to get bearings. You're not the only ones around. There's others. And you see two others. Each individual one of you, that is. There's, you find three. 
three beings in a small closed off area and you see looking back towards where you were it almost looks like the stones themselves seem to grab at the mists that kind of roll and swirl down through the path along the pass almost fingers carved out of rock and stone that reach out towards you except when you go closer there they actually are some hands reaching out through the stone pulling further looking to grab to grasp to pull whatever element of coming through the stone but no more humanity no more life left in them just remnants stuck carved into the rock some breaking off uh, just chiseled down worn with erosion perhaps your fortunes here are fortunes indeed there's no luck but you might have found it there is no chance for one who desperately ran and failed who didn't find their way through to whatever strange intersectionary point this is but there's three there's three beings there now walking on their own as the just edges of the rock and the walls reach out towards you hundreds perhaps of others who were not quite so lucky not quite so quick The ground itself is dark. The sun seems to be creeping up early mornings until as you're kind of looking to watch and gauge, there's a second star farther off. One that seems to be a little closer, a little brighter, burning with this deep, calming yellow-orange glow. Farther one back, a little bit more blue, a little bit more sterile almost there's there's brilliant colors flashing all across the skies as you look up and around through this rocky crag sp cragged space there's trees a couple dead ones in between and in front of you but it seems to grow towards a path out of whatever range this may be No part of this world is yours. Wherever you lived before, it's it echoes here, but it is very much always just a slight tinge off. There's a little bit more in, when you look closely, and then when you look even closer, there's a little bit less. Nothing is quite quite right, quite as it seems. It's just a little bit different. But this is where you find yourselves. Towards the edges, towards the walls, pulling yourselves through as mists and sinews and everything just kind of rolls out and around the ground. You see some creatures and some vines that kind of are climbing and crawling along the walls that have been frozen or partially blended in with the stone in their own places. But 
there is a sense of peace to this world. It's calm. Whatever chaos, whatever energy you had before, it's all gone, but the new panic, the new worry of where this is now is begins to set in. At this point, I think it would probably be safe for you to have your introductions as you're all coming to in different spaces around. Well, um, who, who do you happen to be? Who are you? Uh, well, my, my name is Belle Silverbeck of the Northern Silverbecks, and, uh, where, where might I be? I don't know. Is he with you? Clyde. Uh, no. Uh, I don't know that individual. Lycan. Uh, Clyde is my name. Clyde. Alright. So, uh... How did you get here? I want to know the answer to that myself. Right, right. Um. Well, I'm done lost. Because I don't know how I got here. I don't know where here is. I don't know either of you. Uh. Could, could you introduce yourself? Did you? I introduce? just Clyde. did. Name yeah, Clyde. I, I also did Clyde. Oh! Alright. Uh. And this is Epona. Oh. <laughs> Fancy. Uh. Honestly, I'm just happy she's here. But I just got a donkey with me. Uh. Oh. And a cart. Um. Her name is, uh. Ellis. We're traveling merchants and we 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 were just selling wares and all of a sudden here I am. Did any of you by chance happen to make Angry a wizard? I mean I'm a girl who wheels and deals just as much as anybody else and if they decided they were mad at the deal they got, it's not my fault. I... Not recently? Don't think so. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's dusty in here. Uh, or musty, I should say. It's both. <laughs> Um, uh, it's dusty, it's musty, it's bad. There's just kind of mist that is seemingly almost pouring down over the sides of the rock wall, almost almost like a waterfall, and then just kind of curling up and around your feet in almost these small little um, tendrils and just kind of wisping around like, like hurricanes, just dancing. Do, do I know if any of this is, like, poisonous are we breathing in toxic air or like if it's just like vapor um go ahead and hang on one second uh, if you're going specifically for if it's like toxic go ahead and roll me just a healing check Okay. 
Dragon. Ooh, wow. <laughs> first roll of the game, baby. Critical wow. success on the first. Okay. Normally not ones, not a fun thing to see. Yeah. Now. <laughs> but now when it's all flipped upside now. down. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, okay. Uh it is not poisonous. Guarantee you that. Um, also, go ahead and mark that uh, box by your healing check. Because, <laughs> yeah, nat 1s and 20s, you get bonuses at those at the end. Oh, I do? Yeah. Uh... That's the progression level. There is no actual class and levels. There's just, mm -hmm. you get starting abilities like a background, and then your skills get better after every session. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Yep. Uh, so where's that box, I'm sorry? Uh, there it's should the just... little diamond. Yep. To the left. Oh, okay, just mark it, got it. Yeah. Um... Uh, not only... It had yes. to be... Oh, good. It had to be the, that roll. <laughs> hey. Um... Okay. Yes, not only is the air not toxic or hazardous, it just seems to kind of roll around in sheets of... Like, it, it is a water vapor, that, but it is much more dense than normal. Like, everything around here, you feel just a higher density. There, It feels like there is more gravity here. Everything is just pulling on you slightly more than you are used to or comfortable with. Um... Likewise, with does said any... check. Oh, good. I was going to say, does anybody feel heavy? Yes. Yeah. Because I do. Also, can I just say how lucky that healing check was? I have five. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I was hoping for more, like, awareness or something. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Um... With the critical success. Uh, as you're kind of looking in, kind of observing the mists, there are faint bits of color to them. Just faint bits, almost like it's refracting bits of sunlight, but maybe from the golden amber hues of the closer oh. one with the very faint blues of the farther one, but there is... Uh, motes of deep green just kind of almost at an impercept imperceptible level but motes of greens and yellows and reds and blues just kind of floating in and in amongst and around it there's a faint undercurrent of magic yeah i think uh we might have pissed off a wizard or two this place doesn't have me feeling quite right. But how? Hmm. Smells like magic in the air. Well, we can figure out the how maybe later. All I want to know is, uh, can we get out of here? Does this fallen tree actually exist? Um, there is a tree that has fallen, but it's... It's steep. You, you are more than welcome. Uh, what, what, what are your plans? Uh, can I try to climb up it to the second level? Uh, yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, go ahead okay. and... Go ahead and roll me acrobatics. Wait, it's unless there's a climbing. I don't see a climbing. I don't know why it's not uh, alphabetical. I... There is not a climbing. Okay, yeah, then we'll go with acrobatics. Uh, that will be a fail. Um, you kind of go to kind of claw and dig into it, but the wood itself is uh, rotten down, and so like as, as you kind of try and uh, get a grip on it and kind of pull, elements of the wood just kind of creak and tumble in and... It, you can't get a solid grip on it, and it just kind of begins coming apart in, among your claws. 
Oh, that didn't work. Would you like some uh, assistance there? Do you want it to be a boost? Uh, sure. I don't mind. Okay. Uh. All right. With, with the two of you working together, I yeah, you, there there doesn't need to be a roll here. You you are able to kind of push yourself up towards uh, the higher ledge, kind of begin Yay. to make your what way. Do I see. Um. So up and around towards in like this directions and over here, it's just more mountainous. Like this is, seems to be a path that has been worn in here, but it's, it, it, everything just feels natural. And there is, there, there, there is kind of just this chilled natural mountain setting around. Um, but you, you can see kind of in the directions of the pass, it seems to be used primarily for moving through and bringing different goods through this mountain range. That's the base that you can see, but go ahead and roll me awareness for more okay. specifics. Ah, success. Ooh, nice. Okay, as you have this higher vantage point, um, sorry, uh, you, you you kind of look around down around, down and there seems to be another individual kind of down near the gulch as well, closer towards this larger tree here. They seem to be kind of sprawled out on the ground. Um, and just kind of like reaching towards and kind of pulling themselves on the tree. Uh, le uh, likewise, you do hear some skitterings and echoes from around and different nooks and crannies that have kind of burrowed themselves into the gulch. So you would be kind of, even as you're looking around, you would probably be a little bit up high and they would be kind of curved in beneath. Um, over here though, you do see, it almost looks like two piercing uh, golden cat's eyes looking out of the darkness for just a quick second before I, turning around. I am going to point out both things. This guy saw something over here. And I think I'll jump back down. Okay. Easily enough, you're kind of just able to... Getting used to it. Coming down is a whole lot easier than going up. Making your way. Um, Can I jump on my horse? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Horse time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going over. I don't know about you two. Uh, me, me, and uh, what? I was, I was talking about my donkey. Hmm. Oh, never mind. Uh, we'll, we'll follow along in my cart. Okay. Uh, as uh, fast as we can. Okay, as you begin to kind of make your way over towards the humanoid individual here, they... They are kind of... It seems like they are kind of laying on the ground and kind of reaching up towards the tree um, on first and immediate glance, but you also... You, you see that in, in similar way to like the hands and such that kind of seem to reach out and kind of grasp into and around the walls of the cavernous area where you were, um, their lower torso is kind of melded in with the stone and the roots and the uh, coarse dirt that kind of makes up the base. 
and you can see that they have kind of been pulling themselves up on onto the tree and like there there are elements and streak marks of natural and earthen wear that is kind of beginning to break out onto their person and there are areas where kind of the flesh has been broken a bit and you can see like this blackish ichor kind of just dripping out at different points but they are breathing heavily <laughs> and it, it seems as though they are their consciousness might be fading oh god well that don't look good um, um. They have a uh, kind of messenger's bag that's kind of uh, draped around one arm that is uh, reaching out, kind of holding and grasping onto the tree. Um, and the other one seems to be kind of propped up, holding themselves upright, but the hand is kind of completely buried in the ground, and you can see, like, different bits of cracked dirt that kind of have worked their way up the forearm, and... As the individual is kind of reaching, trying to prop themselves up, you see as this dirt uh, bit on their forearm just kind of crumbles and they just kind of move forward, like fall forward a little bit, uh, catching themselves and just uh, handless. Um, but it seems just almost like the wound was cauterized in it. Just there's nothing there anymore. And just as they fall face first forward into a tangled... Uh, nest of roots that are spreading out ar around and along. We've got problems. Oh. Um, well, wh what do you want to do? I'm gonna keep getting closer. Okay. They can't move to stop you. <laughs> they also really can't turn around to notice your approach. Like, as you're coming up, you, you can see that their head is moving around, but they're limited in their range of motion, so there is just like a, oh, who, who's there? Who's there? Who's coming? Are, are, are you able to... Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what? What? What is going on? Are you the wizard that summoned us here? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, give me one more moment. And uh, uh, as you approach, like, it, it doesn't take a, a skill check to see but like he has kind of fallen forwards over and there is an arrow kind of right in the midsection of their torso that and you can see like the uh this uh blackened veins and ichors kind of beginning to roll up in different patterns around where they are and kind of leading into the shirt and just kind of down the bits that remain What happened to you? Uh, I was trying to find. <clears throat> Hang on. <sighs> Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. Uh, no, no. Um. Oh, there's. <clears throat> he, he kind of pushes himself with the hand on the tree. And kind of begins trying to let go of the bag. There's one, one of, one of them I've got. Uh, we were trying to find the rest. The rest of what? The, the pieces. The here. <clears throat> I'll take it. Yeah, he he will. He's kind of trying to. Pull the satchel off towards you. Um, if you, Liet, 
<clears throat> and uh, as you're looking at him, like there is just fear and panic across his face, but you also notice that like this person is they 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 have gone pale. Like their skin is kind of getting clammy to the touch. Um just it, it seems as though everything around them is just fading and like fading and just falling apart. There is just a rapid decay about them. Le Le Leonora, she she can guide you to maybe a couple of the others, the rest. The stargazer. The ones who walk the... We... We almost could... The... There's... We must find... Four... And you watch as he's kind of beginning to slump over on himself. I need everyone to... Since we don't have cards here, I'm going to be stealing a rule from Pathfinder. Um, oh. I need everyone to go ahead and roll me awareness checks. What do I use to do that? Uh, D20 and versus your awareness oh. skill. Oh. Hey, Andrew. Yeah? Dragon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's going to put you so ahead. So how, how does it uh, work? It's an eight. Eight. Okay. So right now I'm. I have a DC set for a success, um, mm -hmm. based on opponent stealths. Um, okay. So, you just roll the d twenty, and I will compare it to my target number instead of your current target number. Okay. So I got a fifteen. Okay. Do I need to tell you my target number? Nah. Cause, okay. Just because right now I'm going off of stealth scores. Okay. Okay. So, I will tell you that Jacob and Sarah succeeded. Mm -hmm. Which means Hi. you will be not surprised. Uh, okay. Do I mark on my awareness? Yep. Every time you roll a uh, a one or a twenty, because jeez, what yeah. do the marks do exactly? Um, <laughs> at the end of the session, um. Every skill that has a mark on it, uh, you'll roll a check. So for you, that would right now be healing and awareness. And uh, if you roll below your target number, your base chance increases by one. So you just slowly get continually better. And so that's what they have instead of levels. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Yeah. And at any time you get over an 18, you get a new heroic ability. Mm -hmm. But you always have the same number of hit points and willpower points, so basically any adventure can be done for any level, which is really cool. <laughs> and any monster can be done by any level. Like this cat! Yeah. Well, it's not a cat, but it... They, they, they're, what? Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Um... Where is my... There it is. Yeah, okay. Um, as you are going about things, having looked deeply and kind of perceived your area around you, uh, there are a couple other humanoids around you. And what immediately draws your attention to this one especially up here on the second level is as uh as like and as you are kind of there 
you watch as another black-tipped poisoned arrow kind of immediately pierces the hand that was trying to hold and pass the bag to you and kind of almost staples it to one of the roots of the trees of this individual. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Um, and you watch as just kind of like over a very rapid period of time, like this uh, blackened ichor just kind of begins coursing through up into them and they just kind of flop forward, passing out and seemingly dying. <laughs> Um, but with that, and likewise, uh, since you were holding back here, Clyde, uh, you, you have kind of begun to see the different shifting, uh, bright amber eyes that have kind of been moving around in the in the shadows of shorter humanoids, um, with kind of longer ears, um, slightly multifaceted faces, um, almost... It, there's there there is a slight element of it almost looks uh, like low polygon, almost low rendered. But if you look closer, like everything's it just it is it's just a very different bone structure that has kind of different bits of hair all around it. Um, but these are goblins mm -hmm. who are just oh. kind of watching out and kind of peering around. Um, yeah, and. You technically have the first round of initiative here, Jacob, before these guys are going to start running in to attack the newcomers. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, not to alarm any of you, but I believe we have some company uh, currently watching you over think? us. I'm completely surprised. Uh, well, um, let's see. Andrew, can I have the rules for my horse real fast? The rules for the horse, indeed. Let me go ahead and find that. Jeez, combat train. That is important to note. Um, my donkey is not. <laughs> okay, page number 55. Riding animals. Uh, just a picture and send it my way. Yep, you know? that's what I was going for. Um, I will also find that stat block. Common animals. There. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. There they are in the chat. Cool. Uh, but Jacob, yeah. you have one action and you can move your movement speed. You can also choose to swap your place in the initiative order with any of these guys if you want to kind of wait for them. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, I have my two handed axe. Mm hmm. Or you know what? Why not? Since they're fairly far away, and I don't want to get too close anyway. How? How? What is the distance between me and one? That's forty-five feet. That's enough. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw my short spear at one. Okay. Go Essentially, ahead. I'm going to throw my short spear up, jump, and use my back legs to kick the spear at one. All right. Go ahead and roll me that Spears check. Okay. 
That is an 8 out of 16. Okay, that will definitely hit. Or 14. 8 out of 14. Um, he's going to attempt to evade. He's going to use his action to try and evade the spear. Which, evade 10. That's an 18. He does not. He has used his action now, which is rather terrible for him, but you also hit. Nice. That is six damage. Uh, the spear is how much? Six damage. It's a d10. It's a d10. Uh, then you also get your agility damage bonus. Oh, nice. Uh, it's probably either a d4 or... Six. D6? Agility. Yep, it's a d4 for me. So that is a two. Two. All right, eight. that is eight. Uh, they have leather armor, so that's going to reduce it by one point. Um, eight minus one, so seven. Uh, cool. They are badly wounded. Um, Yay, us. Right. Yeah. You watch as this spear just kind of sinks into them. They, they, they try and dodge out of the way, and it, it's sort of a... Okay, am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? And then they kind of just choose the wrong one at the wrong time. And the spear just kind of is just now stuck all the way through them. Um, but that is that for them. Um, all right, uh, anything else for your turn, Jacob? Uh, I think that's all I can do right now. Okay. Uh, they use their action to attempt to dodge, so they are going to run. Uh, they have a movement of 12, so that is six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> and you hear them uh, begin to call out in this sort of very back of the throat kind of um call and they they are it, it is a goblinoid language that you do not understand I was about to say do I understand it You know what since my I have a proficiency in in languages go ahead and roll me a languages check absolutely and it's better for it to be below my yep. number Yep okay Got to roll a 14 right. or lower. I got a 10. Well, that's a success. Hey. Um, he right. is calling for help. Yep, we better go. Um, and, and as this goblin is calling for help, you see kind of coming around the bend, a goblin who has a sort of leaderly appearance uh, riding a oh. large wolf. And they're just going to kind um, of move forward a little bit around here, uh, just becoming known and kind of beginning to try and block off the pass. Sarah, it is your action. I must fight. Um, um, one, um, two, not three, that. four, five, six. And I'm going to make an attack. Okay. With my sword. Okay. Uh, uh ten less than twelve. Okay, that's a that's a hit. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they, they don't have an armor class or anything, so you, you just roll against your thing to see if you hit, and then their armor just reduces the damage. Yeah. The, so yeah. Um, you do not need to go confer to me to see if you hit, and that's really cool. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna say it. Okay. Say what I. Okay. Uh, that's a d10 and a d4. Uh, ten. Ten points. Um, they are super dead. You immediately just go ahead and kind of just slash through, and goblin number one is 
No more. Dang. Could you throw back my spear if you get the chance? Can I take? Can I take the spear out or push it the rest of the way through to get it? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. I think pushing it the rest of the way through would be the easiest way to go about that. Mm. There's a moment where you're just kind of like toying with the goblin who's kind of like just halfway through on here, like a pig on a spit, and just like, yeah, turn it up, and just like flops down. <laughs> but you are able to, yes, pick up the spear, and... Yes, you have, have, have a spear. You have a spear. You have a spear. Um... With that, it is goblin number two who is going to uh, run out with a. They're, they're going to run up here to you with a short sword. And they're yeah. going to attempt to do that. Got to be the 10. That's a 14. That's a miss. As you watch as this goblin kind of hops up towards you and like as you're pulling out the spear you watch as their sword just kind of immediately kind of tries to fly down and hit you now and it just kind of lands in the spear shaft and just kind of gets stuck and they have to pull it back and kind of uh almost recur recoil a little bit away from you as much as they can um so that has been their action And so now number three over here is going to, they're going to dash and they're going to run over towards you, Jacob. So they have a movement of six squares. They're going to dash. So that's going to be double five. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, twelve. And that's going to be their turn. Uh, as number four is going to ready an arrow and try and shoot you with it. With it. Hang on. I feel a sneeze coming on, and then it just doesn't. And it's the it's most annoying. disappointing thing. Got to be to twelve. I know it's that's a to make set. you sneeze if you want. Okay. Uh, so you should have a little bony bit on your nose, right? Mm -hmm. Just like <laughs> a tiny bit below that. If you pinch just ever so slightly with your like tongue out just a bit, uh, you should start feeling like your nasal, like your nasal cavities or whatever start like being a feeling a bit ticklish. <laughs> just like keep chasing that feeling until you sneeze. <laughs> This feels just feels like an excuse to get Andrew to do a weird thing on camera. <laughs> no, no, I swear it does sound weird, but like I, it, I do it all here. Watch. That's, that, that, that's the thing. It makes me feel better, like because I've done stuff like that before, and it just like it relieves the feeling of needing to sneeze, but like you don't actually sneeze. It's <laughs> huh? I'm... See, there we go. All right, uh, Goblin number four is going to shoot a bow at you, and that's a seven out of twelve, so they are going to hit. Uh, that's an agility. Sorry, hold on. I have a sneezing fit now because I pinched my nose. Oh, no. Uh, be careful, uh, Jacob. Uh, 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 Jacob. Clyde. Okay, uh, what was that, sorry? Uh, you're being hit with an arrow. Okay. Uh, that's going to be twelve points of damage. From one bow uh, strike. Down to ten. Down to ten. Has this uh, goblin kind of? Question kinda... is. Oh, good. Oh, did I, I'm sorry. I'm still new to this. Is there like um. Uh, a way to block this or a. Yes. Uh, armor evade thing. Uh, you can choose to not take your action on your turn, and then. Uh, when something happens to you, like an arrow strike, uh, you can choose to try and parry it. And either kind of deflect into a weapon and kind of just like bat it out of the air, or if you have a shield, actually I think it you have to have a shield for ranged combat, which I'm willing to kind of overrule that because I think it's really cool to have the idea of you just seeing this arrow coming out and then just like slicing it in half around you. I think that's 
thematically very cool. Um, yeah. So, but it, it, that takes your action. So if you haven't acted this turn, you can't do that. Okay. Sorry, so if, if you. Because I have acted, I can. Correct. Okay. Yes. So I take 10 points of damage? Yes. Dang, that's a lot of damage. I have 17 hit points, Andrew. They, I rolled maximum damage on the d10. <laughs> okay, uh, with that, Desi, it is your turn. Uh, so I'm a merchant duck with a knife. Mm -hmm. And this situation looks rather dangerous to me. So I'm not going to enter the fight. At least not at this point. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to avoid being attacked. Okay. As much as possible. You are more than welcome to kind of hold your action and just remain in the back. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now the goblin leader who has emerged is going to kind of begin charging forward. Uh, they're going to kind of dash and... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Why am I counting in that? That's six squares. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they're just going to kind of position themselves in the middle to angle towards everyone else. Um, yeah, that's that. And just kind of get a gauge on how the fight is going. So now, as that round of initiative is over, I need everyone to go ahead and uh, roll me for new roll initiative. Again. Yes. Um. So yeah, let's just go ahead and keep with awareness, since that's what we started with. Uh, not as good that time. I got 16. Okay. I also got 16. I got a 7. And I think that succeeded. That does. I think. Okay. Uh, Jacob and Sarah, go ahead and roll off. Since you both rolled 16s. Alright. 7. 7. Uh, 3. Okay, Jacob will go first. Um, I just put myself behind uh, Sarah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so switch in orders. Yeah. yeah. Just okay. because I want the, the chance to get that spear back. Okay. If possible. Well, I can either throw the spear back at you or I can fight the thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, okay. Magic number three has. Oh, wow. And number two has. Oh, wow. That's. Initiative is going to make a big difference. Um. Okay, so number three it is their turn now, and they are going to rush up and attempt to short sword attack you. Okay, so that's going to be... Got to roll under a 10. And that's a 19, so that's a nope. <laughs> um, and so then number four is going to take an arrow shot at... You just killed one of them, Sarah. So they're going to take a shot at you. And so I got to roll under 12, and that's a 13, so that's a nope. You watch as an arrow just kind of hits onto one of the raw, uh, hits onto one of the rocks and just kind of breaks off another small chunk that kind of just crashes to the ground and breaks into dust. But they did not hit, and they do not do their thing. So Desi, it is your turn. Are you still kind of holding out? Um, uh, yeah, I, I really am, because I, uh, yep. Yeah. There's just not much I got going for me. Okay. Not much I got going for me. Meanwhile, me and Sarah are like bleeding out. 
you guys are hard and like better. You realize I am a. We a, haven't a, gotten hit. You're right, but I'm. I also have a, a knife, and that's like it. Unless you want me to run them over with my cart. I mean. <laughs> All right, this uh, goblin riding a wolf is going to kind of pounce at you, Sarah. Actually, wait, hang on, I have to roll for it because it's a d6, it's random. I'm sorry, what? Do merchants not get weapons in this game? They got a knife. Knife is a weapon. (laughs) That was the the weapon I got. All right. Um, So that is going to instead not be a pounce, it is going to be a spear charge. They are going to run up towards uh, towards you on their wolf. And they are going to attack with their spear. And because this is a monster attack, it actually does not have a skill, which is neat. But that means you also can parry it since you have your action. Yes. Um, do you choose to use your action to parry it? Just as you watch as this goblin on a wolf kind of levels a spear at you and just kind of begins charging in your general direction. Yeah, I think I will. Okay. So, what is the durability of the weapon that you are using? I'd like to use my shield. It's a 15. Oh, wow, yes. Um, Because the spear deals 3d8 piercing damage. Um, but your shield uh, absorbs all 11 points, and so you, t- you take one no damage because you parried, um, but your shield is also not damaged. <laughs> you, just, Yay! you just bat this goblin's uh, spear away, and now it is your turn. You have used your action, but you do have movement left. Are opportunity attacks a thing? Nope. Unless you have, like, a special ability, and I will tell you right here and now, they don't. Um. Okay, that's... That's as far as I can go. All right. Uh, is this close enough to hand off a spear to your DM? Um, spears have reach, so I think you it, that makes sense that you can kind of spin it around towards Jacob. Sure. Offer the non-pointy end. Fair Ooh. enough. Much appreciated. You now have a spear. It is your action. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. So, <laughs> so are like is cover or free actions like a thing in this game? Like yes. No. Okay, so like if I sort of huddle by this tree with uh, lichen, mm-hmm. like are we like partially covered for damage or? Um, let me double check, but I believe it is, I think it just increases their chance of missing. Alright. Check the index. I do not see anything about cover. Wait, right. hang on. Let me check about the hide action, because I think I know that's a thing. And also quick question with like um shielding or like not taking an action so like I can you know, protect myself around or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you able to do that for someone else? Like, if you're next to someone and they get attacked, can you, like, use your action to 
help. Um, I don't believe there's a rule for that, but I'm willing to say yes, because that's really cool. All right, that's sweet. It. That's my thing. That's your thing? That's, yeah. Then there is a thing, and it's if you have that thing. Uh, Guardian, let me... I do not have that thing. Uh, if you and another player are both within two meters of the same enemy and the enemy tries to attack the other character, you can activate this ability to force the enemy to attack you instead. This ability can be done out of turn and does not count as an action. Oh, dang, that's awesome. Because <laughs> you don't have to spend oh, your action to do that, point. so... Yeah. Alright, um, in that case, I'm just going to... Uh, look at Lycan and just say, back to back, uh, run here, uh, and then can I vary up stuff, like, uh, go somewhere, attack, and then go somewhere else? Like yeah, sure. D &D? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna use my two-handed axe, um, and attack number three. Okay. That is a four. That is a hit. I'm sure. I'm, unless your axe's score is below a four. No, my axe score is fourteen. Yes, then that's a very much a hit. <laughs> and then, well, let me find my D ten. Oh, there it is. Okay. This little goblin's gonna take six, uh, nine, so fifteen damage. Uh, he has uh, nine hit points and is dead. All right. Sounds good to me. For, for me, it's just literally I grab my two-handed axe from my back real quick, do a slash, go uh, say back to back to Lycan and just stand right here. Okay. Uh, basically twirling the axe back to my back with my short spear now in my uh, left foot. Okay. All right. Um, with that, at the end of the initiative round, we go ahead and roll awareness again. Yay! Um, Honestly, it kind it kind of uh, benefits three. you to to roll high on awareness sometimes. Sometimes because you can block and. Okay, stuff. all of us are rolling for this. If you are if you want to continue to kind of sit in the back, you don't have to. Okay. Andrew. Yes. Dragon. I, geez. <laughs> you are the luckiest person in rolling or natural ones. <laughs> uh, Sarah, what, what did uh, you say? Three. Three. Okay. Wow. Any other time, we'd be pissed. Yep. <laughs> I've only rolled three natural ones tonight. <laughs> yeah. Question. Like, if I have awareness already checked, do I, like, uncheck it? or? Nope. It, it just stays checked. All right. That's a 17. That's a... Ooh, that's... And that one's dead. So there's just two of them remaining. So Jacob, you have uh, command of the initiative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after just slicing a goblin last round. Yep. <laughs> feeling pretty good. Uh, let's see. I... You know what? I'm actually going to wait uh, and pop back in initiative at a later time. Uh, who do you choose to swap your initiative with? Oh, I can swap my initiative with someone. Yep, that, that, that's how it works. You, you trade your roll for someone else so that they go now, and then you kind of just right. wait for them. Do you want to go now, Sarah? Um, I could go. I think I have a plan. Okay. Okay, I'll do that then. Um, just because I, I kind of want—I kind of want to wait just a little bit, uh, maybe for them to get a bit closer, so I can use axe, and I still oh. want to be, you know, back to back. Sarah is immediately after you, so after Sarah goes, then it would be you again. All right, uh, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> but you are able to swap with the enemies as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, when you roll really low for initiative or have a really low card, like you can swap with an enemy and have and force them to act faster. Or you can go ahead and attack, and then they have a chance to try and react to you if they if they do. Gotcha. So there, there, um, there is a play to either be really early on or really late behind, so it's just... Yeah. Okay, uh, where is this guy in the initiative with the wolf? Uh, right after Sarah. 
Okay, in that case, you know what? Uh, I'll switch with him. Let him move close. Uh, Sarah goes, and I go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and roll for their monster ability. That is a five. They're going to go for a bite. So they are going to charge their distance. Five. Hang on. One, two, three, four. They're going to bite down on you and be swinging you. Uh, hang on. Swinging you back and forth and kind of just chomp and throw. Hang on. Yep. Yeah, no, it's just, this is just a straight attack damage. Hey. Mm. Monster attacks are, huh? Yeah, there's they, they they don't have to roll; they just do damage, which feels harsh. But I guess that's just what it is. Um, All right. Oh gosh. If it's more than seven, I die. <laughs> well, you're un you are dying. Yes. Um, that is fifteen. Hmm. Okay, well, the, actually, it is 13 with my armor. That's better. Uh, however, uh, I, you said I can block this in some way again? Um, you do have your action. You can attempt to dodge, rolling an evade check to try, or you can try and parry. Um, it's going to be... This is a wolf bite. You're, you're going to have to try and dodge this. <laughs> All right, so I can't parry. Gotcha. Do you have a shield uh, okay. on you? I'll, I'll attempt to evade. If you have a shield, I'll say you can parry. Uh, I do not have a shield. Then it's going to be a dodge. Okie doke. Hmm. That is... What is that? Sorry, it's dark in my ear. It's another natural uh, one. <laughs> it is not this time. Uh... What happens if the numbers match my evade? Uh, you have to roll your number or lower, so that would be a success. Oh, okay, I, I got a 12 out of 12. That is just enough. You kind of watch as this wolf is pounding, pouncing over to you and kind of leaps to bite you, and you just kind of immediately just duck under. Well, huh. I was hoping to do damage this round, but you know what? That's, wait, that's for next round. <laughs> Thankfully, there's not many left, so, yeah. Sarah, it is your action. Okay, I'm going to head around to here. Okay. And I'd like to attack the goblin riding the wolf. wolf. They act as one unit, so they have this. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a 12. 12 matches. Okay, that hits. Okay. Six. Points of damage? Yes. Uh, that's with the damage bonus die? Yep. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. You take a... As they are pounding, pouncing around, you just kind of throw out and slice into them and deal some damage. As finally... Oh, hang on, I forgot about number four because they're just kind of taking pot shots and being cheap. And Can someone please take care of the archer? <laughs> Uh, so it's it would be their turn, and they are going to shoot at. Uh, so you just moved around and you're kind of behind Jacob. They're going to take a shot at at Clyde. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to roll and try and get below a twelve. That's a natural twenty, so that's just bad. Demon. Yep. Demon. <laughs> Demons. <laughs> All of them. Um, well, hey, uh, he can mark his sheet uh, for 
for bows or yeah. whatnot. And, uh, hopefully Try and get on better. the level up, you, you get the big bear. Yeah, um, that's not going to happen. He's probably going to die. <laughs> but... <laughs> Hit your friend. Hit your friend. That is true. That is a possibility. How much HP do the goblins have again? Uh, nine. Nine, okay. Uh, the goblin leader has 24. Uh, current or total? Total. And current, because I don't think we've done any damage to him. You have done damage to him now. Oh, okay. Okay, a demon roll in ranged combat. I have to roll a d6 effect. Uh, oh, okay. These are all bad. Okay, I rolled a 2. You run out of arrows and must get more before you can use the weapon again. He has all no right. more arrows. He cannot take pot shots. <laughs> well, that, that goblin's dealt with. <laughs> he dealt with himself. <laughs> What, did he use, like, two arrows? Did he only bring two arrows? Apparently. <laughs> like, dang. We uh, used them all on the NPC. Yep. And with that, number two is over here, and they are going to... They're going to... Try and do a thing. They're going to stand back here, and they're going to... Nah, they're going to run forward and attack. They would have no other reason to. One, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're going to attack. And so... That's an 18. That's not going to hit. So that's, that's that. That's that. All right, awareness again. Okay. Oh, in in the right light, I thought it was a, another one, but no, it, it is sixteen. Uh, two. Okay. Um, the leader rolls a. Ooh, the leader rolls a one. Uh oh, dragon. Uh -oh. Um, no. number two gets an eight, um, and number four, who is fresh out of lock, rolls an 18. Number four is a non-issue. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Monster attack, they're going to go for a pounce. They are... Uh, the wolf kind of rears itself up onto its hind legs and kind of tries to... Here, you know what? I'm going to roll a d20. If it's odds, it's going to go to Sarah. If it's evens, it's going to go to Jacob. That's an 18. That's even. Okay. So 2d8 bludgeoning can be... Yep. Uh, can be dodged, can be parried, can be all of that. Um, that's go to. Oh, good. He said, "Like, let's go." Okay. Uh, that is going to be fifteen points of damage, as this wolf kind of begins berating and just kind of pouncing down and, and striking at you with its claws. Jacob. Oh, I thought that, I thought it was on Sarah. Oh, wait! I said even. You said I thought you said odds me evens Jacob. Yeah, and I thought you rolled a seventeen. What it, it was an eighteen. Eight, 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 eight. Oh, it's me. Okay. <sighs> well, I guess I'm gonna evade again. Uh, <laughs> not really doing much attacking. I mean that does that is it's an attack against you. So. Yep. I'm 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 stalling this guy. Uh, -huh. uh that is an eleven. Eleven. That I believe is lower than your twelve, so Yes. No damage. You just completely I keep just barely barely dodging this guy. Yeah. They're getting 
You, you, you can sell, sense that they are getting frustrated with you. That's okay. I, I, I don't mind keeping aggro as long as Sarah keeps dealing out damage. All right. And with that, Sarah, it is your turn. Uh, attack the big guy. Attack the big guy. I completely understand. Ah, uh, that's a miss. Ah, dang. Okay. Uh, number two is going to run around and... Number two is going to try and attack you because they ran forward at you last time. They're going to... They're going to keep trying because they are stubborn. Andrew, at first I thought you were going to say run around and attack me. And I was like, what What do these goblins have against me right now? Right now, nothing. Um, I, I was right going to say they were going to run around now? behind him, but like, it, that's a 19, so it can't do anything. Uh, so that's going to be its action. And so, Jacob, you have used your action. You have movement remaining. Um... Anything you would like to do remaining on your turn? Uh, nope, nothing. Okay. I'm just still, still sort of uh, on all fours right now, just sort of uh, crouching and just ready for another attack. Okay. Goblin number four, oh, seeing okay. that they are running out of arrows, <laughs> is going to run away this way. And that's going to be their turn. Um, so, awareness. Yeah. Three. Fourteen. I'm still here. Yep. Come where? Leader gets a ten. And number two gets a 13. All right, Jacob, it is your turn. <laughs> uh, okay. Dab, dab, what what dab. did big guy roll again? 10. 10? I'm going to swap with him. Okay. He's going to go ahead and... Just, just in case he decides to attack me again, I'm just, I want to be able to dodge instead of attack. Okay. They are going to kind of run around here and then kind of immediately go for number two, a swing from above. It you, you watch as it runs around over here and then kind of jumps over both of you. Oh, that's the wrong way. And as they're doing so, the goblin is going to whack at you with their scimitar. Who? Uh, Sarah. This time. Okay. All right. And so that's going to be 3d6 slashing damage. That's uh okay. That's going to be 10 points of damage to you. Minus five because armor. So. Yep. Oh. Okay. Okay. And now Jacob, it is your turn. All right. Now that I finally get a chance to attack, I'm just going to be like, mm. all right. <laughs> uh, take out my uh, uh, my two-handed axe and go. All right, my turn. <laughs> and I will attack. Okay. That is a five out of fourteen. Okay, that's gonna hit. That is 10. Points of damage. And 6, so 16 plus my strength, which is 6. 4, so 20 points of damage total. Uh, he had 18 remaining. Nice. So I'm as gonna do a yeah. clean, clean, like, swing just right down its jaw like severing its upper and lower teeth uh, down to its like hind legs. As this goblin is kind of swinging its scimitar at Sarah and kind of pouncing over you, 
you just kind of throw your axe up and just kind of like hit the jaw right in it and the wolf just kind of like rolls over and tumbles down collapsing on the goblin yes and the two of them are deceased um seeing that number two is going to run (laughs) they're just running (laughs) Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Dashing. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're trying to get away, because that's... That's not... No. Just no. Uh, Sarah. I, I look at Lycan. We chasing or letting free? I'm... I am mathing. Like I said earlier, if there was one skill I could be proficient in. Also, movement is divided by two, right? Yep. For how much you have? Yeah, because okay. technically it's a two meter grid. Um, and your score is in meters. My brain's like, it's I'm just bad. easier to just divide by two and call it a square. Yeah, I have, uh, I have seven. So you're fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let it go. All right. Well done, everyone. You were very I helpful. I'm, I'm going to uh, walk up to. Uh, what was your name again? Bell. No. I'm gonna walk up and to uh, like get right up in Bell's face and said, "Why didn't you do anything? Why? Why?" Did you not attack once? Um, that's not my thing. All right. So, what would you have done if me and Lycan both died, and then you were on your own against two goblins and a beast? Well, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh,. I would have come but what back would you me. have done if that happened? You, you know what? I don't have to answer to you one, one little bit, do I? Who do you think you are, my mama? I am the one that... One of the two, I should say, that just defeated the goblin horde that would have otherwise seemingly killed you. That's who I am. No, Hi, you're, I'm you're, Clyde. You are two individuals that got yourself into a fight which you were perfectly capable of walking away from at any point at this time, but you didn't because you did. Okay. How so, would we walk away? You know, they came in this way, we run the other way. You know, okay. that's a possibility. You just decided that you was going to fight. I just decided I wasn't going to fight. And if you don't like the way I do things, well, then tough luck. All right. So anyway, Lycan, uh, what's the plan right now? Oh, don't mind me posing a body. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to be nice. And then head the way that one ran off to. Because they came from that way, they're heading back that way, surely their lair must be that way. Alright. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. He is dead, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Inside of, uh, do you take the bag? Yeah, his, his bag, yes. I, what's in the bag? Okay, for one, there is a map. It's the map that is up here at the top of the page of the greater area here. Um, it seems like the nearest town is outskirt um, up there. It is a two days journey, roughly, from where you are currently to there um, by foot there is also 
a uh, piece of a statue. Um, it seems to be kind of made out of basalt. Uh, that, uh, is the legs and bottom part of a humanoid. Um, in fact, it quite looks like We have pictures? Uh, yes, I'm just trying to find which one, where it is. It is this one here in the corner of the map. Okay. And you, you see that even though as you have kind of, it has this uh, basalt style outer area, there is almost like an amethyst geode part of it that is just kind of hollowed out and crystalline on the inside. That kind of seems to have small glints and shimmers to it. Uh, can I check any of the, uh, the goblins and the beasts? Sure. Uh, they have a couple different weapons on them. The goblin leader has a serrated scimitar. Um, I was about to say. I was about to say, if you guys don't loot these things, I'm going to. Um, each of the dead goblin scouts has a short bow on them, as well as a short sword. Alright. Um... Hey, Lycan, do you want any of these weapons? Um, nah, y you can have them if you want. Fair enough. Anything right. he doesn't take, I'm going to go behind them and take for myself. Uh, they really are kind of just pretty scant as far as things you... You'd be able to pull together kind of from all of the dead goblins in this area the equivalent of one day's worth of rations. All right. I'll put that in my pack. Mm -hmm. Hey, Belle? Yes? How fast can that donkey move? I don't rightly know. How, do how fast does a donkey move in this area? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Fourteen. That does that's not too bad. Seven squares. And, and I do have a cart, so anything you guys want to throw in the back, if you guys want to just jump in the back and h ask me for whatever direction, we can get going. I'm fine walking, thanks. That's cool. A pony. <laughs> well, you don't have to ride her. You could always tie her to the back of my I cart and give her a rest, or you could ride her on as well. I'm getting on the horse. <laughs> That's cool, too. Hey, sweetie. Okay. The horse neighs. I cannot do a neigh no. sound. It's a friendly name. Hey. There we mm -hmm. go. That was good. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Um. So where are we headed, uh, Lycan? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16, 18, 20, this way. <laughs> Alright. I'm fine following beside you. I'm not even sure where, what am I on the map? Am I the bard? Or... Uh, yeah, I, I have yes the bard yeah, token okay. just because there works. isn't a merchant token. <laughs> Actually, hey, that bag right there would have been What about the money there. bag? That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> you know what? What about the humanoid money bag? You are now a humanoid money bag. Yeah! 
And why are you following us? Because I feel like it. Alright, and what if I don't feel like you following us? What you gonna do, stop me? Maybe. Well, I would rather her follow Dude. us than her Dude. not. All, all I got to say to you is then I'm going this way, and if you don't like it, you can find your own other way. Alright. And what if I don't like it, and I also want to go this way without you? I right, don't force think. between the two. I don't rightly care what you think. If you can understand oh, that. Sorry, I was, look, I was trying to move me, not you. Hey. None of that. We're in this together, whether you like it or not. It really didn't seem like we were in this together in that fight back there. Yes, I'm just... uh, uh. Alright, whatever. I'll be the bigger bird in this situation and walk away. I'm telling you this now. My skill sets aren't in the fighting department. I'm just saying. I don't do much of it. I know how to lash out with people with my tongue better than I do with my work, my fists. Would have done us no good if we all died. Well, it would have done you no good if me and Lycan died and then it was a three on one fight to you. You can think whatever you want. You're not going to change my mind on what I decided for myself. You can make me feel bad, you can make me feel guilty, which I ain't gonna do, but get over it. Okay. On the way to outset. Does it? No, it's a uh, outskirt. Wherever this way takes us. Yes, that, that will take you to outskirt. That is the way okay. out and down, kind of around on the map here. Mm -hmm. Outskirt it is. Um, as the days kind of pass... You know what? Hang on. I can... There's a rat, there's a table here for stuff that can happen. Let's see if something interesting happens. Mm. Oh no, there's a table. Do we need to roll? Um, iron forest around outskirt in the woods, in the marshes, at the foot of the mountains. And they like my rule. Go ahead and uh, one of you go ahead and roll me a d12. <laughs> I'm going to roll. Do we heal? Uh, it would be a two days journey, so you would be able to heal. Um, yeah, you, you have enough time to heal. I got a 10. Really? Yeah. Okay. That was, huh. That was the worst option. Really? That? Out of 12? Oh, I was just joking. What's it's a, not. What's a 10? Uh, okay. What is it? A giant dragon comes out of the air. That's 11. <laughs> <laughs> One off. Oh. Um, the gales of a great storm howl between the mountain peaks. As you are making your way down and around, you find yourself meeting, uh, finding a traveler upon the roads. Uh, they wear plain brown clothes and have a hood draped uh, far over their head. Um, and you see them kind of uh, throwing their hands, kind of trying to control and uh, watch as the winds begin to pick up leaves from around and snows that kind of begin being almost recycled back up into the air. Um, Aw, a mage. 
I think. Yes. Uh, oh. uh, they are. They are. They are human, or at least humanoid looking. Um, but they are kind of just working to control and test the winds, and just their strength with it. Um. I, uh, I come up to the individual and say, what you doing? Practicing magic. What are you working on? Where are well, you heading? Well, we're just trying to figure out where we're at. That's what I done figuring. So you from around these parts? I am. So, would you might be telling us where we're at? Any rumors? Oh, I, I, I can tell you some a couple of things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got me a bit of a place here over a bit towards outset, but home for me is uh, over with old Bothell's load. Uh, been traveling down here for a while. Um... Sorry. It's all right. It's all right. I'm mostly just trying to clear up some of the snows here in these parts. Uh, just looking for a Appreciate lost it. mine in these spaces here. There were these old mountains here. They used to be a bit of a dwarven sanctuary. There. There were there were several of them who ran different claims and caches around here, and one of them apparently before before the snows came in, before the snows set permanently, they had a bit of a large bit of a large cashier, bit of a bit of a hoard, if you would. Uh, it really? just said it was somewhere here in the far south southwest, and so I've been trying to clear up these, clear out these uh, as much of the snow as I can, and just practice some magecraft along the way. Well, I mean, be careful, okay? stories have said like just heaps of gold and silver, lots of shimmering emeralds. <laughs> I heard that there was a crystal the size of a goblin's head. These here. Um, could, would you be able to point the direction in which this uh, heaps and mounts might be in? If I knew where they were, I wouldn't be unearthing what, them. What a, is there any indication or clues been left behind? Maybe a couple. Would you mind wanting to travel with us and see what we can find? Hang on, let me find her. I mean, if it's heaps of mounts, I got me a beautiful cart right here for hauling heaps and mounds of things. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. Let's see what we got. Okay. Gotta remember how this works. I got a five. And that's against... Um... An eight. So that is a success. Yeah! So, how well did I succeed? Uh, okay. Look, if you're looking for towns, I can help lead you back to our little our, our mining camp back down here. Uh, pull that Bothell's load. That would be lovely. 
There's there, well, there's a couple secret uh, little bits of shortcuts here in these uh, mountains that have been I've been figuring that they must have come through here at some point. And I'm betting that's where where the actual treasure's hidden. But perfect. Just so, not quiet. So you say they hit him somewhere in the back trails around here? We just know it's up here in the mountains. There's a camp somewhere in the back trails, I believe is what he said. I hit and it's you. his own camp. This say, is the was... kind of mining facility that she has lived in. Um, you meet her kind of around here, just kind of hiking, going on an expedition around the... Uh, around in the bases of the mountain range. Well. Alright, well, I think I'm going to take a gander around these hills and uh, see what I can find. Well, I wish you luck. I'm heading back to... Goodbye. Outskirts. Um, Say, uh, where are you from? She looks to uh, both of you. We don't see many folks like you around in these parts. Are you talking uh, about me and Lycan? Yes. All right. Well, I can't say uh, Lycan none, but I'm from a small village within a forest. Okay. Uh, about the same. Must be from. Oh, must I... be a while back, cause there's really just kind of wastes once you get past the mountains. You tell me there's a forest behind these things as well. Could be. Well, I am from a southern town, up on the coast. Anyway. You're from the north. Anyway. Then. So, uh, what's your plan, uh, fly, uh yeah. Lycan? I think heading back to Outskirt would be wise. Largest settlement around here. Awesome. Oh, um, yeah, they. Do you mind journeying together then? Let's go. Alright. Good luck, Belle. Good luck, y'all! Okay. You just put the party. Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry, Andrew. Nope, it's good. It's good. That's a lie, and we all know it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, he can still salvage this. I have ideas. I <laughs> just need. Just need a quick second to process. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. 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 So on okay. the way to outskirts. Yes. The two of you make your way. Uh, there is another night cycle where you're able to take an extended rest but then you are able to find yourselves on the outskirts of outskirt making your way into town all right yeah can you believe her i don't know why i turned southern <laughs> you're trying it's to contagious like her. you're a language sponge that's what you are can you believe her? You're starting to sound like her. Well, I mean, I caught myself, I know. Okay, as you approach Outskirt, uh, you come first upon a crude palisade of sharpened logs that uh, winds its way around the settlement. It's not very high, maybe about, you know, one and a half folks tall. And you guys are 
Wolfkin are on the average a little bit taller than the average person, so maybe about one wolf Wolfkin. Uh, but there are several spots here where there are, there have been gaps, there have been attacks, and this is just kind of an outside barrier palisade. Um, oh, also, none of the goblins had any like gold or silver or copper on them, did they? No. All right. Just wondered. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, uh, also, um, uh, just curious. When do the little marks on the like you know awareness and healing for me like when when do you roll those? Do that's at the up? end of the game session. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's it's just a one shot. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it was you know in the yeah. day or whatnot. So yeah, maybe if we like this, we might, you know, maybe swap this out for our regular sessions every once in a while, because I like something different. Maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe, maybe. But as you're kind of making your way around, there's a couple of villagers just kind of with different arms that are just kind of like wandering around, kind of keeping guard and patrol. Um, they do not seem to necessarily be immediately hostile, but as you're just kind of making your way over, and they're kind of they're, eventually one of them will kind of come on up and. Where are you guys coming from? I'll be honest. Uh, not quite too sure. Myself. Rekmar Pass, I believe. All right. Yeah. Okay, we're familiar with the past. Uh, we had a guy who went up in there uh, a bit ago. He was farmer folk, uh, kind of looking for some. Do you happen to see him? Not me personally. All right. Uh. I feel like everybody's done token on my ass. Uh, <laughs> I think he's dead. Uh, oh, I'm that's sorry. Hmm. Okay, there. Did he find anything up in that up up in the uh, gulch region there? We, we, we kind of flows with the mists a bit and catches with the snow, and we occasionally get some blistering cold air running through here. And can I see like how true the story is, like? If he's actually curious about the person or what they had on them, maybe he was like escaping from them or something. Sure. Yeah, what's the closest thing to an insight check here? <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll bluffing. Awareness. Yeah, aw your choice of awareness oh. or bluffing. Awareness. That's a fail. Uh oh, that's a demon. Oh, yeah. well, you've already got it ticked, so. Yeah, I, and honestly, if I had more ticks, like for each one, I would have this tick three times now. <laughs> um, in that case, I trust you completely. Uh... Yeah, no, I mean. Yeah. He... Gold cherry there, it's been been known to swallow a few folks up every once in a while. Stargazer's been kind of up and around and wandering from those parts here, but I haven't seen him in a bit, so unsure where he they're going. something about that. Um... Yeah, I don't think he's going to Here's his bag. Ah, oh, well, thank you. Um... What all is this? And you see him and kind of... we just started the end of the world. 
And you see him kind of rifling through the bits of it. And I'm like, yeah, this is... This here's the old man's. Um, and he pulls out the statue bit and kind of looks through it. He had this on him. Yeah. Huh. Not really sure what it is either. Nasty uh, band of goblins seem to want it. Ah, good thing or they didn't get it. Or... Why did that sound sarcastic? No, it's a good thing they didn't get it. It still sounds a little bit sarcastic, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just how he talks. Everybody's <laughs> just putting you out today, ain't they? Well, no. I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to our captain. And... We're going to go ahead and, and store this thing here back. Back within the town. Fair enough. Yes. Are we uh, are we clear to enter the town? Oh yeah, yeah. You guys are. I mean, don't go trying any sort of sneakiness or whatever. But yeah, no. You guys are all We're good. Not playing on it. All right. All right. He seemed like a trustworthy fellow. Can we beat this captain? Oh, uh... I sh uh, sure, yeah. Here, come on with us. And then, uh... One of them will kind of continue to stay posted, and the other two will lead you over, and they will bring you to this... human, um you can kind of just see the age on their face like they are a battle hardened uh, war veteran kind of in their sh in their 40s with kind of shoulder length hair uh, and a, their nose has, has looks like it has been broken at least once before and has been healed and so now he's kind of making his way around the make his way around town Ah! Walking fast, pacing in the No, it's... In a film bound. Do, 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 do. Making my way. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I know. Um, uh, I can't help myself. Nope. No, it's, 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 it's good. It's good. Um, we got some new folks here around town, and they, uh... Brought us back. Brought us back this here little thing. Oh, he, he kind of re, uh, they pass it over to him. And, hang on. Hmm. Weatherman, huh? Interesting. Did he say something about? Uh, by the time we got to him, he wasn't able to say much yeah. of anything. Right. Horde's deep end there. I'll be back. Yeah. There was a, a goblin attack, and uh, one thing led to another in the crossfire. So, sadly. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this back to Leonara. She's bit of a mage here in town, so. I was almost a mage once. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Huh. Neat. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, she's been toying with some of the toying with some of the mists up there and I don't know what she was trying to do, cause. So, hmm. Is it possible she's looking for the treasure that's rumored to be up there? I. 
I mean... I suppose it's possible. But... Thing is, she's been working with some folks who claim that they can use the mists, who can walk it, can find some way of pulling themselves between the bounds of our village here, so... She says it a lot more eloquently. A lot more elegantly. Interesting. I'd like to meet this person. Well, I'll let her know when I pass this off to her, but... Can't just be bringing you around to everybody. <laughs> but no, I'll, I'll let her know that there's some... Some new folk in town who want to meet her out, meet over her. And then he will kind of take that piece and begin making his way towards um, a tavern where he kind of, where he just immediately kind of closes the doors and you see them kind of flip over the sign to closed for the day. Well, I was going to go to a tavern, but I guess not that one. Okay. Let's find a different tavern. Okay. And wait it out. Yep. Um. Sounds good to me. I mean, worse comes worse, we can sleep outside again. It's no two minds for me. Hang on. I'd rather not if I don't have to. Fair. Uh, it, it seems like the tavern is kind of the main place for uh, traveling folk to find in and a refuge. Um, but there, there is a small temple here that they are more than that would be more than willing to accommodate people on a short term basis. Um, that will do. It there the temple itself is a kind of small, uh, mainly circular main building that's fallen a little bit into disrepair, but the ceiling is covered with a couple different I'm back. Uh, symbols and glyphs um, of just things that kind of are around. Um, but there, there are areas that are kind of protected from the elements that they would be happy to help set you guys up in for a, at least a short stint until, okay. well, until the tavern re reopens. Cool. Um, but as you're there, you're kind of welcomed in by a, uh, by a, a couple of halflings, um, uh, Barretton and Semolina. Um, they are just, they're kind of the mainstays here. Um, uh, she is uh, rather strong and stout, but has a large uh, flower-stained um, apron that has a sort of floral, uh, faded floral print underneath. Um, whereas he is uh, a bit more heavy set, uh, has... Uh, slightly curlier hair and he's got uh, a butcher's apron on but is also but it's kind of more folded down towards his side and he has a shepherd's cane in his hand as he's just kind of making his way around town and helping out the folks who need it um, but they, they, they do help run or at least be um, what's the right word just help with some of the upkeep here Gotcha. Maintain. Maintain. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um. I. But. 
rest up in the temple thing. Okay. I guess. Same, same. Okay. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. It went there too. We're terrible. (laughs) We are siblings, though. In the middle of the night, you see about three people enter towards where the tavern is. And, sorry, not the tavern, the temple. Sorry. Um, And one of them kind of uh, pulls a small chest, uh, a small uh, wicker cylinder kind of from around their side. And they kind of open up one of the ends and you see an animal kind of crawl out and they kind of just toss it up into the temple area and you watch as they trace a small sigil in the air and one of the markers lights up on the temple and then they immediately just kind of begin wandering away as right after that quick small little violet flare uh, the bat kind of immediately flies off towards another direction. What the hell was that? <laughs> not sure. They they seem to either not notice that you were there or not care that you were there. What the? Can I, like, go investigate the area, or are they still still there? Uh, They just kind of came in quickly, released it, and then left. You are more than welcome to... I'm going to go investigate the area. Okay. Go ahead and roll a spot hidden check. Okay. Uh, 10. My spot hidden is 10, so success. Okay. Um, in the, in one of the wall segments around the temple, there is a small niche that's kind of hewn into one, hewn into there. Um, uh, kind of carved into this niche are archaic runes that, um, if you roll languages, you can... Uh, I, I won't tell you what they are, what they translate to, but kind of at the bottom of the niche is a depression where it, it seems as though there is enough space for a, it, it's about a torch size, but there isn't a large brazier there or any sort of thing that would hold it, um, but there is bits of kind of glittery gemstone dust that is kind of smushed into some of the nicks and niches there. Um. Well, I'm not great with language, but I'll give it a shot. Okay. Uh, that's a demon. Okay. The language is unfamiliar to you in any sort of written form. But go ahead and mark languages. <laughs> Just for the That's sake true. Of it. You could get better by not learning how to by not knowing Theoretically. it. Theoretically. Yep. Um Clyde, do you wanna look at this? Uh I am not as good as languages as you know, most, but I uh, will give it a try. Sure. Uh, ooh, I got a 19. My language is like four. Just th- saying a fluent language duck would come in handy right about now. That's <laughs> true. I was about to step out to say, I think that duck is good with languages. Uh, and as you're thinking this, uh, we will go ahead and rotate over towards the... Uh, towards the base of of uh, the Coomer Mountains as 
Bell and Curse Me With Names. Um, that's not her name. What a hell of a name. No. Um, uh, her, uh, in this, I would you, call you, you would, Cursey. <laughs> her name is Sephira. Uh, S-E-P-H-Y-R-A. As the two of I'm you... I that one. Yeah, Sephira. And as the two of you are uh, kind of making your way around looking for different bits and pieces, mm -hmm. um, go ahead and roll me a spot hidden, uh, but go ahead and roll it with a boon since you're spending an extended period of time kind of, th since there isn't a large rush at this point. Did you know that as a merchant, my heroic power... <laughs> I think that's what it's called. Heroic mm -hmm. is treasure hunt. Oh, wow. I did not. Yeah. Yep, that was one of those little nifty things. I'm like, treasure hunt is my special skill? Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know what that does. Uh, it should say like a willpower I... cost, and you can spend a couple well, willpowers. I have... Get it. I have three willpowers. So, um, what's your willpower score? Three. That it should be higher look. than that. It's equal to your will will score. Oh. Hmm. Well, I must have been mistaken about that. It's all good. Um. Should be four. fourteen, I believe, for you. For intelligence, or oh, okay, yeah, it is fourteen. A uh, treasure hunter. At a crossroads of some kind, you'll uh, active. You can activate this ability to learn the direction of the greatest treasures. Okay, I'm gonna use that right now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and roll me that spot hidden check, and go ahead and mark off um, three willpower points. And then spot hidden is five? I don't know if that's right on mine. I might have put that one down wrong. Spot hidden? I believe that is... That, that's one of my extra abilities, so if it was a five, it should be ten. Okay. Because I, I wrote down the actual scores first, and then I went back and changed them. I must have missed that one. Okay. So, yeah, that one should be a ten. So I... I think that should be a success. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, and if it's a ten and you rolled a seven? Eight. Eight. That would be a success. Okay. Okay. Um, nonetheless, as you are kind of going about kind of talking through different bits of lore. Hang on, I have to find another page in the book. Um, there it is. Okay. Adventure number 39. Page number. Uh, okay. Okay, as you are kind of making your way around, you kind of turn your uh, turn your bill to the air and kind of sniff around, and ah, smell gold in the air. And 
um, kind of as gusts of wind are kind of blowing around, uh, some at your companion's control and others not. Um, you see for a brief moment a slight glint up in the up in one of the mountains uh, further to the southwest. So if you are right about in this area here. It would be probably right around here. So there's probably about a day and a half, but like there is a faint glint and you just kind of have an innate sense that if you kind of keep heading uh, towards the south and towards the west, towards the, yeah, towards the southwest, that you would be able to find at least maybe a chasm or or maybe just something that's lit up in the middle of the night. I follow my nose. Okay. This duck's nose is good for sniffing out treasure. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a d12. Okay, six. Huh. Okay. Okay. As you are making your way around, kind of following along, uh, eventually night falls, and you hear kind of just the sounds of rattling chains just kind of all around as just individuals are kind of hiking around and uh, you notice that your companion just kind of tucks in a little deeper uh, just just kind of whispers over to you don't worry about them just a couple phantoms in the woods there they don't mean to any as har- they don't mean us any harm just lost souls looking for more gold You say it so, but I am more weary and cautious. I know. I I, I hear you. These mines have been, these mountains have been plumbed for as many mines as can be. Sorry, I have an itch. Okay, uh, sorry, okay. These mines have been plumbed for as much as we could from... And we've seen dwarves and dwarvens, just and just dwarves. Everyone else, they're all, they were all up here for a while, and eventually just made their way elsewhere, trying to find other riches, find find uh, trying to find other opportunities, and gotta be something more here. Well, I completely understand that. Mm-hmm. I'm a duck. Who likes to find a good deal? The thought of a treasure going out there undiscovered, why, it tickles my sense of adventure as well as my sense of monetary value. So even if there is a little old banshee out in the woods, I wouldn't mind. It'd take a lot to get me to. Uh, off the trail of a big find like this. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a d6. I got a three. Three? Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Um, as you are kind of, as the nights and the shift pass, uh, and morning begins to come, you see a bat kind of flying in said southeastern direction. 
and eventually moving in one of the same or similar directions as the briefest of glints that you had seen and identified. It seems to just kind of be flying back towards its roost, but go ahead and roll me an awareness check. You are talking to me, right? Yep. Okay. Awareness. All right. Ooh, I got a five. Okay. My awareness is eight. I got a five. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to find the proper thing. Because there's a lot of stuff. Uh, you see that there is a small note attached to the one of the bat's legs. Just a small piece of parchment that has been kind of wrapped up, uh, tied with like a fishing line and just attached to it. I decide to fo uh, follow it as long as it's going in the same direction I am. Okay, um, that's going to be kind of an extended journey because you are on the ground and it is in the air. Go ahead. Oh, well. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Because it flies. Okay. It, it flies fast. Alright. As I said, is it flying the same direction I've been going? It is. Well, I'm going to keep going that way. Okay. Um, as the two of you make your way through the woods, um, sorry, not through the woods, my brain is being scattered across a million places right now, um, but as you make your way through the mountains, uh, following up, you would eventually arrive towards the small cavernous entrance that you found that you had seen and kind of had been following the bat towards. Um, there is a small brazier on the inside of the, uh, the, the small pockmark. Um, and you can see that there are, that there is at least one individual inside kind of having a couple things stored and there is a small fire built up on the inside as they are making notes just kind of all across and along the walls. Can I read what the walls say from where I'm at? Um, sure. I need to find the right part of this because um. okay. Um, go, yeah, go ahead and roll languages. All right. I got a 12. Okay. Out of 14. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, this mound, they are writing different marks and sigils around, uh, it seems arcane in nature, um, but it seems as though this small area here has been blessed 
Um, it uh, the individual here is kind of making notes with chalk upon there with uh, just different patterns and just intricate almost maps. Uh, it looks like different maps at different points and there are different glyphs connecting different portions of the map uh, with one point connected to another to another to another and there are ideas and you do you the the thing is it is strange it is arcane but everything about it feels very comfortable and like very secure in understanding as this individual is basically writing down runes to bestow blessings upon this space upon the research done here and they are um, calling upon a name Sarthmog I uh, I whisper to my wizard friend do you, do you understand any of this? Uh, she is proficient in elementalism which is not this um, <laughs> well do you have a, any inkling what it might be? I I've heard the name sorry well, it's Long before we were here, like uh, old stories say that there were titans, elemental beings who'd watch over, and eventually, one day they all decide to venture forth beyond beyond the mountains, encircling our lands, and. I think that that was the one of them. Maybe they're trying to call it back, call blessings upon themselves, but hmm. you think this has anything to do with the treasure? Probably not. I don't think All so, right, well. but. That means we are going to back out of here quietly. Hope they don't ma hear us make a peep. Go ahead and roll a sneaking check. All right. I got a natural one. Okay. All right, that is quite good. As you're making your way um, around, you uh, deftly avoid any sound of crunching of snow, of snapping of twigs beneath your feet, and just deftly make your way away from this peak. Um... Okay, hang on. I'm just just needing a second to process. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I take it you then make camp for the night and continue making your way around the towards the southwest of the mountain range. Yep. For the next time. Okay. Then we will rotate back to Lycan and Clyde as you are in outskirt, uh, waking up in All the right. temple after having taken a, an extended shift rest. 
And so you have all of your stuff regenerated. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Anything new about the weird area where something weird happened? Nope. It just seemed like a strange occurrence the first night. Right. Also, Andrew, um, question. Yes. As far as, uh, you know, this place, you know, the, the Misty Vale, mm -hmm. um, do I know it? Like, nope. Have I? Okay. You have never heard of this place before. Your life was somewhere else and you find yourself oh, okay. here it's okay there, there there is a definite weirdness to the area yeah. you've never so, heard of uh, it it's just kind of like, like yeah. have you ever heard of the misty veil before Well, dear DM? Nope. No. I I'm say just I'm like, as you know, confused about this area as you are. My main concern is I have no idea where this area even is to be, you know, so far from uh, where I hang my hat. Geographically, uh, it wouldn't fit onto any of your maps. Yeah. Uh, do, is like other planes common knowledge? Um. There's perhaps like theories and ideas, but like not, it's not really taken seriously. All right. But do you like, think we were... it's, it, it would be a myth or a legend kind of thing. Yeah. Do you think us being here has something to do with that artifact that one guy had? I mean, on his, like, verge of dying, all of a sudden we were there. Like, we were summoned here by something. Sounds weird, I know, but who was to say? I'm not gonna completely discredit it. I was going to see how that was going this yeah. morning. Shall we go check out that tavern? Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, the town, uh, the town tavern is called the Three Stags. It's a rather impressive two-story building that has a large thatched, uh, thatched roof with half-timbered walls. Um, outside the door, kind of hangs a red sign that reads "The Three Stags: Beer, Bed, and Food at Heavenly Prices." Uh, there's a, there's sounds of cheery voices kind of spilling to the streets from there as well as the smell of roasted boar. Ooh. For breakfast, interesting. Bacon. Yep. Um. Let's go. Oh, I guess I'll <laughs> go up to the bartender uh, and say... Anybody... Hey. Did the guy we talked to yesterday in here? Uh, he is not, actually. Okay. Uh, hey, um... Mr... What's your name? Bartender. Oh, you're looking for the bartender, right? Um, yeah. I'm just trying to find the name. Uh, the the bartender. Uh, she is a, a human woman uh, with uh, graying hair, but still kind of a young, like an almost an ageless, timeless face. Um, she wears kind of a. Uh, green shirt with a 
pale apron over the top, um, a tied red bow in her hair, uh, and she carries kind of a just a large serving plate to and with some dirty dishes on it that she was picking up from a couple other tables. Oh, hi there. Uh, welcome to the Three Stags. Uh, give me just one moment and I'll be right with you guys. All right. All right. Uh, but please feel free to find yourselves a seat, make yourselves comfortable. Um, I do, sir. Okay. <sighs> tables, tables, numbers. Um. Okay. Okay, and eventually she will kind of make her way back out there and kind of be dusting off her hands and kind of having set everything down. She has a... Uh, she kind of just comes over to you and kind of has this slightly mild anxiety, but all right, uh, what can I do for you guys today? So... I was just wondering, have you ever heard of uh, the Fallen Grove? Fallen Grove? I uh, I don't believe I have. Uh, is that where you guys uh, are from? Fantastical Kingdom. Continent Never heard of, of it before. All right. Why? Um, is everything okay? Yeah, just trying to find my way back home. Oh. Um, so no, no continents named Mac you've heard of? We've got someone who uh, calls this one here Axiom, but I've never heard. I am not familiar with that one. What about you, uh, Lycan? Have you ever heard of any of those places where you're from? No. No? <laughs> no. All right. Well, uh... <laughs> we may have died. <laughs> or well... just pissed off the wizard. <laughs> I sure don't think you look very dead. I've had to well, deal with a few who were a bit closer when they came through here, but you guys seem right as rain. Well, that's fair. Um, I just, I'm not quite sure where we are, and I'm just trying to find, you know, bearing to... the world. Yeah. Gotcha. Essentially, one moment, like, at home, next moment, I was here, uh, by the Drachmar Pass. Oh, that's a... Weird energy all around, smell of magic in the air, that sort of thing. Well, I'm not much of a oh, practitioner, but... Do you happen to have a world map on you? Or in the tavern? There was one in the bag that uh, you had gotten from them. And is this? This is the map that he is had. This, a... this is, and this would be, if she had a map, this would be the one that she would have that she could show you. Gotcha. So the Misty Vale is okay. the world. People don't go outside okay. of the mountains here. All right. What's outside of the mountains? Mountains. I haven't a clue. I haven't been out there, been past there. Uh, All right. I, I know up towards some of the mountains, uh, that's where, and you, you can see that this is sort of a painful bit. I know there are some 
uh, orders of elvish knights who kind of took up took up a bit of refuge there and yeah they're they're they're, they're, they're just not the don't worry about it. Uh, what 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 can I do for you guys tonight or today? You, you you've got me all turned around, and you you can see that there are kind of bags under I'm... her eyes that are tired. I am sorry for bringing you into this. Oh, coffee and some of that roasted pork, please. Absolutely, I can go ahead and get that for you. Uh, nothing for me for now. Okay. Uh, that's going to run you about uh, one silver piece here. Uh, perfect. Oh, hand one. Okay. And she will eventually uh, rotate her way back around and uh, bring you out that plate. And it's, it's, a, it's a substantially large plate of just different cuts of meat. It's it's not necessarily elegantly placed, but it is... The, the whole design of everything is that it is homey and comfort food. Question, Andrew. It is does food. the silver that Lycan used to pay uh, look like my silver that I have? No, it doesn't. All right. And does the silver that Lycan used look like the silver that other patrons are using? Go ahead and roll me an awareness check. All right. May I participate in this too? Sure. Since since and the questions have begun to be raised. <laughs> sure. That is nine out of nine. Okay. That's a fail on my part. Oh. Uh, the silver pieces. There, there seem to be kind of a general understanding of what one silver coin would be worth but there doesn't seem to be a standard hmm. a couple patrons here and there that you notice they are, they have some that are similar but n there are differences and so when like if she comes and has to get change for somebody there are coins of all different types some silvers have different people's faces on them. Some have different designs. Some have uh, different marks on them. But each one, a silver coin, is a silver coin. And that is strange, right? That That's not normal. Like That's not normal to how you've lived. <laughs> All right. That's what I thought. It, everyone around well. here seems like that is normal. Where? Can I ask something? Uh, how do you know which silver coins go from where? Not me. Okay. Or which coins, you know, etc. I'm, I'm asking the bartender. Oh. Uh, she will come back. Um, it, it's just kind of a rule a bit here. Like, a silver coin is just kind of a silver coin. Everyone kind of comes in with their own special bit, and no two are the same. But we we just try and kind of maintain some some semblance of a balance here. So, can I ask where are you from? I I, I was born here in the Vale. Uh, okay. Does the Vale have its own set of currency, or...? Not really, is we the, just there... try and find similarities between the currencies that other folks bring through here. But where do the currencies come from? Like, who who makes them? Now, that's a question that I don't really... I'm not really sure. You see, oh. folks, we, we bring... We have food here. We've come to understand that there's kind of 
similarities between different coins around in these parts and so we say one old big plate here is about a silver piece and most folks seem to agree with that and have some form of a silver piece around on them and sure they don't all match up but it's a silver piece Uh -huh. And I mean the value of the coin is in the metals within it, so like roughly this much silver, and that's that's the cost of meals. Yeah, um, understandable. Uh, can I ask where, like, say, where does new money come from? Like, where where's the mint? If that makes sense. I mean, we have we, we we don't really have a mint here, but we. I mean, I've got some in my garden. Uh, I mean, who produces coins for the general populace? <laughs> I mean, everyone kind of uses their own thing based on where they are. Here at Outskirt, we're kind of just gonna we're we're more than willing to just work and deal with a little bit of everyone else, like. You are harassing that bartender. I'm... I'm asking the questions that, like, I feel like should be, should be asked though. Like, I, 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 I doesn't know. You're new here. I, I, I can tell. I understand it. It, once, once you've been here for a while, it just kind of becomes normal. Like outskirts, we've got ourselves a bit of. A bit of our quirks and cultures and little bits and bits and changes and it, it it just becomes normal sure there sure no two coins quite look the same but it's a little bit of the magic of this place i think all right do, do you mind if i ask you one last question then absolutely what is your earliest memory I know I hated baths. I remember morning lights uh, creeping through our window. We had a small little piece of stained glass, and so it would, as the suns arose here, we could kind of get little bits of dancing colored lights across the across the cottage floor. I think that would probably be. That would probably be the earliest things I can think of. And where was that? Born and raised here in Outskirt. I, oh, okay. From the uh, outskirts of Outskirts, but, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, I, I was more asking, like, yeah. uh, where, where specifically in Outskirt were, you know, the, the colorful windows. Oh, my, that, my old home, it's, it's not here anymore, unfortunately. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much. Uh, of course. Always happy to see some new faces in town. I'm going to take a like and a side. <laughs> or like once the bartender leaves, just sort of speak like and I think there is some deep magic <laughs> shenanigans going on. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm not quite sure, but it seems that with all the different coin like appearing like from different nations around the world or whatnot that there's got to be some trick to it like this isn't real or we are dead and this is purgatory of some kind or, or something like that do people die in purg feeds me <laughs> do you have any thoughts on the whole thing it's weird I can it is very confusing weird. but I think I'm following 
Yeah. Um, honestly, I just want to see if I can get out of the, the mountains. <laughs> see if we can escape. I'm thinking... I'm thinking... We found part of a statue. We might need to find the other part. Like the guy said. Fair, fair. Oh my gosh! What, what did the statue look like again, Andrew? Um, like the one that is in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. That's exactly what I thought you were gonna say. Like, oh, oh. Okay, because I noticed like little bits of statue pieces on the far uh, corners of the map. I'm like, oh my god, and they all come together. Okay, that's fun. Uh, that's some nice map design right there. Mm -hmm. But I don't see the person we talked to around here. And yeah. I don't think we got a name. Um, can I recognize, like, a smell in the air for him? I mean, I have an ability that, like, lets me track someone, a uh, hunting instinct. Yeah. But I didn't actually use it, so. Sure, you can go ahead. Uh, hunting All in right. six. Uh, I, believe... wait, 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 I, I have to mark them when they're close. Okay. So I mean I don't I I didn't do that before, but I was wondering if there's something like oh can I can I vaguely remember like a smell or, or something. Sure, that uh, that makes sense. Um, so go ahead and it, it would be awareness. Go ahead and roll me awareness. I've been rolling a lot of awareness. I know. It's <laughs> it's a useful skill, but... Hey, that's a three and nine. Okay. Um, there are some familiar scents from... Like, you, you kind of get the sense of, like... You, you can smell some of the people who were out patrolling and kind of stationing doing guard duty. You remember a couple of them, and there's... One or two of them out and around in the tavern at this point. Um, you don't smell specifically their leader. Um, and you don't really get a, a whiff or a direction as to where they would be. Based on any sort of breeze or moving of air. Right, uh, can I go back to the, the camp and like see if anyone knows where he might have gone? To wait, where you were at the temple? Yeah. Okay. See if like any of the guards or anyone, you know. Yeah, sure. Was... Sure, you can do that. Right. Also, sorry to put a Dauron thing, but um, I'm gonna have to go around like nine thirty ish. Uh, okay. My throat's already feeling kind of bad, and I, I'm. I'm wicked tired from just being sick for the past week. I completely Aww. understand that. <laughs> um. Okay. okay, as you are finding around and talking to the, some of the townsfolk, they will, you will get the idea that, understanding that uh, the person who is leading the guard patrol on the outside of Outskirt uh, is, uh, you, you, so you get the name Hardy. Uh, they are the person that you had kind of talked to the other day with the broken nose and uh, longer hair and kind of that distinct look. Um... He's uh, one of the main uh, guards and protectors of the town, often trying to drive off goblins, bandits, and other troublemakers and the like. Sorry. 
Um. Okay. I'm just trying to find the right thing here. Um, go ahead and roll. Uh, yes, there will there will be a roll. Um. Go ahead and roll me a d12. Two. Two. Okay. Um, as Clyde is looking around uh, and kind of looking for different areas where this Hardy might be, uh, are, you, are you working to kind of help with him or just kind of listening yeah, around? I think so. Okay. You said two. Yes. I mean, Hardy, he's kind of been pretty busy as of late. I mean, I heard that it was like a human's lifetime ago that there were orcs who kind of ran things over here in the Vale. I'm not really sure why they left, but rumor has it a chief Nitin called uh, Maladuke is gathering the clans to try and reclaim the valley. So I think he's kind of been a bit guarded and kind of trying to increase as much security as he can. So probably a bit busy there. Okay. He didn't seem that busy yesterday. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if you, if you head out around on the outsides, you might be able to find him. Okay. Well, I'll take a look around there then. Yeah, of course. Ha happy to help. Um, and then you are able to... Uh, do you kind of continue looking for more information, or... Uh, okay. head to where the guy said to go look, I'd say. Okay. Um, it, it takes probably about 20 or so minutes, but as the guards are kind of making their way and moving around, you're able to get occasional directions here and there, and eventually you do find him. He is... Uh, Making his way, he was kind of on the opposite side of the uh, the village of Outskirt at that time. At the time you were looking for him, primarily, and then just kind of cycled around a bit. And oh, hello again. Yeah, I, I remember you. Uh, how, how is everything? And you were you were able to find lodging and everything. Good. Good. Yeah, at the temple. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it seems like they. I'm glad you're able to find someone to help take care of you. What? Uh, what kind of things do you? Uh, is there something I can help you with? How... Yeah. We're just wondering how the thing with the thing I brought you. Uh oh yeah yeah I brought that to. Uh, Leonora. She, was quite grateful. Uh, she claimed she picked it up back off of me, and that was really the last thing I saw. Um, her, she's been trying to collect some of those things for some sort of some sort of magical thing. I mean, she's. I'm not really sure exactly what she's trying to use them for, but 
I've heard rumors that she's trying to find new ways outside of the veil. Really? At least that's. I know it sounds ridiculous, but no, like. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um. But like, yeah. So. I'm going to ask you again. Where is she? Can't we speak with her? Once I passed it over to her, she said she had to bring it to a friend out in the mountains. She left last night in the middle of the... She left basically right after, like, right as dawn was setting. As dusk was... At twilight. Roughly around twilight. Fancy. Yeah. Very familiar with that time. Why? It's just nice. Oh, yeah. Can't disagree there. It's not too warm for the day, but not quite blistering cold tonight. It's just right. As... Is there anything else I can help you with, or...? I think I, I, we can take care of it from here. Thank you. Of course, happy to help. And he will kind of then let you head on your way. Hmm. Like right. we need to go back to the mountains. Yep, sounds that way. I'm gonna go get a pona. Yep. I'm ready whenever you are. I got the horse. Okay. Get on. All right. I get on. Okay. And then you kind of begin making your way around, out and around. Heading back south towards the mountain. Yep. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, as you make your way around, we'll go ahead and rotate back over to Desi for a bit. Um, after having your encounter finding the rather funky little, uh, cavern there with the cloaked and uh, generally featureless not, not featureless but like they, they, they were cloaked and and hard to identify without having gotten closer mysterious individuals yes um, you kind of continue your time making it along uh, which direction are you heading are you still going in the western direction or uh, do you maybe double back for eastern or heading for trying to head further um, south? I, I think I'm going a little more west. Okay. A little bit more west. Mm, I think it's west I'm going. Okay. Yeah, more west. More west, okay. Um, likewise, over the night you hear kind of the same rustling of chain mail and occasionally a couple grunts and uh, just kind of quick, small quick phrases from different dwarven spirits in the mountains. Um, but Can as... I understand any anything that's being said go ahead and roll a languages check uh, 
closed it. Give me a second. Takes a minute for it to load. It's all good. I always try to have everything up and open. got it too okay wow um the things the spirits are saying it is very quiet but it's in an old uh, dwarvish dialect um but you hear phrases like help me uh air white death i'm sinking it, 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 on one hand, you kind of hear the clangs and clatters of pickaxes and mining equipment, but there's also signs and struggles and sounds of combat. But less defense and more predation. Um, I just search for signs of, uh, more camps or different, just trying to find that sense of, sense of gold in the air, you know? It, it, it's, it's light today. There's not a strong sense of treasure. Would I be able to um, use my my heroic action? Mm -hmm. uh, spend three points and uh, see if I'm going in the right direction. Um, westernly seems to be the correct direction. All right, well, uh, you know what? I'm going to pick up the pace and go a little bit faster today. Okay. As you guys uh, do make your travels, eventually towards the end of the day, you reach... Um, it looks like an old mine. Um, it is the place here that is marked Bothel's Load. Uh, Bothid's Load. Bothild's Load here on the map. Um, but this is greatly exaggerated as far as the size. There are a couple bits of wood that are scattered here and there that could be construed as a path, and there is a small tunnel that leads deep into one of the mountains. Um, but it is a camp that has been in disrepair for at least decades. Well, um, I'm going to pull my cart right up to the opening. Your donkey kind of neighs at you, brays at you. <laughs> yep. Um, the air in there oh, is what? cold and dry. I'm not going to make you go in. We're just going to... We're going to leave you right here and check it out. You want to go with me? Oh, I mean... I'm with you. I, I, I'm looking for this place as much as you are. No, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm with you here. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look around some of these buildings out here. Uh, check to see if there's anything inside or underneath anything it may be a map of the area or a map of the tunnel system inside the mine um there are no maps of anything here um it it, it is primarily just broken down wooden things um there are a couple of barrels you can see where bits of snow have kind of dampened it and softened it so it has basically flattened um, the wood is warped. It is rotten. It is. It, it it's just dead. All go, right. But go ahead well, and make me an uh, 
a hunting and fishing check. Not my best. I got a three, and I have a three. Well, that's a success. Uh, there Yay. are footprints kind of scattered about near the entrance to the to the maw of the cavern, and a couple that would kind of scatter around about outward, um, on primarily on places that are that there isn't wooden bits on the ground. Uh, someone's been here recently. That seems to um, quell some of the hopes that Sephira has. Um, if this is perhaps the fa uh, the fabled lost mine, then it's pro then she's thinking it's probably been looted. Well, you want to go in and check it out, anyways. I mean, uh, it's worth a shot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I get out my lantern and I, I light it. And uh, we start heading down into the mine. Okay. Um, hang on. I don't know why, but I have this inkling of leaving a note in my cart just in case someone comes by looking for me. Um... There is, as you're approaching the maw of the cave, there is a small uh, kind of wrought iron um, gate, uh, but it's kind of been knocked down, and so you can see that there are little bits of words that are kind of put in and kind of scrawled across it and kind of hammered in at different points. Um, okay. You don't. I I know your language is is good is rather good, so I'm not going to have you roll for it. Um, mm -hmm. But you can pick up in a sort of a goblinoid writing style things like White Death's Triumph, Greed's Price, and just kind of different messages and things like that. Okay. But as you make your way in, you pass through the gates, uh, and there is a small hallway that kind of leads down a little bit. Um, okay. The walls are decorated with uh, rather vandalized uh, images depicting some dwarven accents and heroics and, su and the such like that. And Sephira seems relieved. Um, uh, she will con confer to you that based on what she understands about the myths and ideas of Bothold, uh, that this seems like a reasonable possible resting place for either her camp at one point or her perhaps her final resting place and her loot. Mm. But... Once again, kind of hard to say for sure, just because it's been a while and it's been vandalized and... Yeah. Um, when, as, as you are approaching there, you, you hear out near the entrance, like the very front entrance, almost a slight chime of church bells. But just like, almost like the little handbells that are around and just this very faint little dinging. And as you approach and your lantern light casts down upon the interior there, there is an inner gate that is locked. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I approach, did you say it locked where I came from or where I'm going to? Where you're going to. Okay, okay. 
Um, I look at the lock. Okay. And the gate. Um, it seems to be a newer lock. It's probably the newest piece of metal in this entire establishment. Hmm. The gate is old. It's probably original from when this mine was functional. Okay. Well, um... I'm gonna take my hand and, uh, try to pick this lock. Okay. I believe lock picking is a thing here. Wouldn't it be under sleight of hand or something like that? That sounds exactly right. Alright. I got a four. Okay. I got a six. That is a success. You're able to pick the lock, and as you do so, the gate kind of just creaks open in uh, into a larger, d deep area. Um, go ahead and roll me an awareness check. I got a 15 out of 8. Not okay. success. Gotcha. Okay. You make your way inward, and eventually you come across a goblin bearing a short sword as they are kind of, uh, kind of trying to gesture and hold you back towards this um, main tunnel that you were that you had found yourself in that had the reliefs that were vandalized, um, and uh, there there are probably three on one side of you coming in from deeper within the ca cavern and two more from the front who kind of seemingly had rang the bells to sound some sort of alarm. Mm. So you say there's three of them all together? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, no, there, there are five of them all together. Three of them coming from within, two of them coming from outside. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to sneak up on the closest one and try to slit his throat. They are... It would be kind of hard to sneak because they are all watching you. Whoa. Yeah, they they, they emerged from the depths of there, and they had watched you enter and are basically have you at a choke point. Hmm. You uh, got anything to help this situation? Nope. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I am going to start negotiating my feathers off. <laughs> okay. Uh... So, hello, my friends. How are you this evening? I... Uh, they do... They, oh, wait, they can't speak. Um, hang on. What would they be? What? Where are you at our camp? Where? Oh. Right, right. In what way do you, do you travel? Where do you I hail? Hear... Where do you hail uh, from? Far, far to the north. Uh, or south. Depends on what direction you're coming from. Well, is it the north or this is the south? Is it both? I'm confused. I mean, everyone knows this confused? here is a flat land. So, no... If... Are you from the north or are you from the south? In the north. Ugh. Okay. What what bring you with us? What business do you carry? Well, um, I've heard that there are fantastic artifacts down here in this cave, and I've been I've been looking for some, you know, like them archaeologists and. And digging up old things like bones and things like that, you know? And I was just wondering if you found any. Uh, 
And we've got a couple things. What sorts of things are you looking for? Well, the truth of the matter is I'm both a merchant and a treasure hunter. And, uh, I don't know, I got this sixth sense that told me that there was something in this direction. And it just pulled me in. Well, that better pull you mean... out. Because this here's uh, our cave. Well, I don't want your cave. Good, it's ours. Good, you can keep it. Okay, get out. <laughs> well, I don't want, can I look around though? No. <laughs> I promise I won't take anything unless I tell you first. What if there's something here you don't know about? What if this place has secrets that you can't discover? I'm an expert treasure hunter. I can sniff out all kinds of things. You can even bring someone with us to, to help us look around. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perse uh Is it persuasion? I believe it's persuasion. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Don't I have one? It's called, um, give me a second. Bartering! Wouldn't this be considered bartering? What are you... Hmm. Sure. All right. So I got a 13 out of 16. Okay. Um. We're keeping your donkey. I need some food for the winter months. And... Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't take my best friend, but what if I, I've got six days rations with me right now. And what if, if I find anything really cool, I'll bring you guys food for the winter. I'll even go out and buy it for you. I'll go uh, get you the best food you probably had in your life. I think you... Is this one offering us insects? I'm talking about real meat. Yeah, here, so are we. Not just little bugs, but like deer and pig and all those other nummy, yummy treats you get. So caramelized and glazed and oh, spiced. Mm. Nummy treats for winter. Things that keep your belly so full. You come out this cave during the springtime looking like fat little hogs. Not to say it's a bad thing. I myself am one plump duck. So what you say? Just let me look around. See what I can find. You can see the next chamber. Well, we'll let you in a little bit more. Sure. All right. Just don't eat my best friend out there. If I find anything good, maybe I could take it into town and sell it for you. All right, so uh, I guess we got the permission to go into the next chamber? Yep, technically. <laughs> okay. Um, bit number three. Uh, there are a group of goblins here. Um, easily at least six more on the inside of this next chamber. Um... Have All right. Been? And you, you hear whispers among them. 
because they're kind of talking. Um, but in the center of the chamber is a statue of a dwarf um, where the head has been knocked off. Um, and well, that's sad. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, your companion, uh, Sephira, notices that there are notices on the statue um, four long, thin braids that kind of cross over the chest, which it was one of the signs of Bothold, the dwarven conqueror and treasure hunter who perhaps found a resting place either here or elsewhere. Alright, well, um, I start looking around the chamber, starting around the edges and the walls, knocking around places, being cautious enough not to trip anything, but close enough to notice that there's something different or unusual. Okay. Um, towards one wing of the building there is a small kind of uh, doorway that opens up to um, some, sta some areas where there are several broken carts that are stored there. Uh, and towards the other there are broken down stables on the other side on just different wings. Um, the stables themselves, you, you see you kind of have to pull and push at the wrought iron gate. And even then, you kind of let go immediately as large uh, wargs begin kind of yapping at you. And uh, one of the goblins around you is like, oh, oh, oh yeah, no, don't do that unless you want them to be feasting on you tonight. No, 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 no. Uh, I'll keep looking somewhere else. I pretty much look on all the corners and take my time around the room and right up until I get to the statue. Okay. Um. And then I, I, I ask him, D where'd the head go? It was gone when we got here. Oh. Hmm. look around the statue. Do I find anything? Nothing particularly. Um, as you kind of make your way around, go ahead and roll me just a general spot hidden check. Okay. I got an 11. Out of five. Okay. I did not make that one. It, it, there doesn't seem to be much stored in this room, and that which has been, at least at one point, was picked over pretty, pretty much, pretty cleanly. All right, well, I, uh, start pushing on the different braids and seeing if there's anything about the statue, try to move it. It is heavy. It is basalt. Mm. All right. Uh, uh, and I mean, like, this statue is probably about 12 feet tall total. Like, the head is maybe, like, a good... It's at least 10 and a half, 11 feet up. Or, like, where the head would be. guys wouldn't mind if I just go ahead and look in another chamber? Come on. Uh, over towards kind of the left wing, if you kind of begin making your way there, since there is a beaten down door over there, and it's just kind of filled with broken down carts. Like, they're not going to stop you unless you try and do something. Nope. I'm just going to go in there and look. Okay. Uh, wide stalls kind of separated by meter high stone walls um, line kind of this north side wall of the room um, there are once again vandalized reliefs of dwarves loading carts with large silver ingots seen on the walls um, a dying fire of broken cart parts smolder in the center of the chamber um, but I, uh, 
I nudge Sophia with my elbow, looking at the carvings on the wall. <laughs> um. Uh, towards one of the walls of the chamber, there are stairs that kind of lead back the way you came. Um, but in each of these carts, they have, um, they do have a silver ingot in there that has been left behind by the door, by the, um, goblins. I said, I say to them, you guys interested in these silver rocks here? Oh, I mean, we're, yeah, yeah, go ahead. How many of them are there? There's one in each cart. You sure I can have these? It's all yours. All right. And how many carts are there? Six. Six all together. All right, well, um... I guess I'll, uh, I'll just take these and put them in my cart and I'll be, I'll be right back, if you don't mind. As you try and kind of lift up the ingot, it is, it seems to be melted to the cart. Huh. I look at it. Be like, is there any way to pry it off there? Doesn't inherently seem to be. Why would a silver ingot be melted to a cart? It would have had to have gotten really hot, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Then how is the cart still standing if something that got that hot while it was in there? I mean, they're kind of broken down, but yeah, I know, I, I know I, what you mean. I mean, wouldn't it have burned up with it? I don't. Do you care if I break these things in here? Be careful with our garbage. You you do consider it garbage, right? Okay. And well, we want you to be careful with it. All right. So, I am going to take my knife. Okay. And slice not 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 like a whole bunch but like into the wood enough to like pry the metal off the top like like you're skimming it see yeah. if i can get it unstuck that way all right so wait, are you going for like the top of it to just try and shave some of the silver off or like no, trying I'm to peel the whole bar up trying to peel the whole bar up off the off the wood okay Go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand check. I got a two. Okay. Out of six. Okay. You are able to peel up the silver ingot and kind of get it to hold back. Um... And once you kind of get the silver ingot up and are able to kind of begin passing it away, um, there are bits and pieces of the cart that just kind of snap closed like a bear trap around your hand. Whoa. Oh. Ow. Um, hang on a second as I pull up some information. Wait, okay. Is it actually a bear trap or is it like just holding my hand it's an actual bear trap ow was it, the silver ingots were on there design and melted down so that it would be a trap if you tried to steal from the dwarves uh, <laughs> i mean i did not notice this was there uh, that's going to be a total of nine points of damage. Damn. 
as this trap just immediately kind of clamps down around you. Um, hey. And it, it's a bit rusty, so it's not quite as fast or as powerful as it would have been if it was kept in prime and pristine operating conditions. Uh, can I pry it off me? Sure, yeah. Yeah, okay. But you do have okay. a thin silver ingot. I'm gonna go around and dismantle all the traps in these damn carts now that I know that's there. Because I'm gonna look underneath and see if there's a way to unhook the mechanisms. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going. For, I'm not gonna walk away without these. I am a treasure hunter. This is what we do. Okay, you are able to. Um, go ahead and just for the sake of it, roll me a hunting and fishing check. Giving that these are hunting traps. Seven out of three. Okay. Um, As as far as disarming the traps goes, they they seem to be functionally built into the carts and why these, uh, the basins of the carts really haven't eroded as much. Um, You're able to tap out a couple of the nails, but when the trap fires, it kind of tears itself up from the base of the cart, snapping in on itself. So there is like large chunks of wood that come up with it and kind of have splinters inlaid and making, uh, freeing yourself from trying to free the silver bar from it is a rather difficult errand. Is there a way for me to just trigger the traps without hurting myself? What sorts of things would you be willing to try and do with that? Uh, maybe find a plank of wood, pry the bar up, and let it snap around the wood without hurting myself? Because the way the trap is lodged, having triggered it yourself, if the ingot is raised up, basically like it is pulling up on a metal mechanism that then springs closed so you'd have to have a way to have a pry bar underneath the ingot to push it up is there a way for me to wrap a rope around it and then tie the rope to something else and pull on the ingot from a distance it's basically attached to the bottom of the cart This sucks. I got one. <laughs> and they le- they've. It seems like someone of them have f- had figured this out, and so that they had just left it alone. Oh, you guys are sneaky. I hope I afforded you some entertainment this evening. <laughs> there are goblins who are out there, and yes, there are some of them who are chuckling and laughing and. <laughs> Well, uh, what's a girl to do? Hmm. Sophia, do you have anything that might be able to help us? I can do some faint wind. I don't think that's really going to help much except for get rid of some of the stink. Um, Well, it's too bad you don't have a way to snap that little rope underneath that trap without getting involved with it. Hmm. I'm a greedy duck if you didn't know. I have to figure it out. 
I don't like to walk away from something this rocky and interesting. I like shiny things. Hmm. Anyways. Are you sure you guys won't just let me destroy these things? Do you use them? They're fun for people like you to come and mess with. Okay, you saw me bloody myself once. Can I break the shit out of them? Nah, because someone else is going to come and mess themselves up. <sighs> you guys are no <laughs> fun. What if I told you I could get you real good food if I can get to these things? Someone I know, oh, out in the towns. They yeah. like... Yeah. These big shiny rocks, and they uh, they're willing to give me good stuff for it. But you got a donkey out there. That's good food. The, don the donkey's for hauling treasure. I I deal in treasure hunting, and sometimes I'm there. There ain't enough of me to carry it all. Donkey don't taste good, anyways. What do you say? Come on, can I convince you? Go ahead and roll persuasion. All right. Persuasion. I got a three out of eight. Okay. Um... We'll let you leave, but let your friends know that when they come here to bring more food with them. No, no, I didn't say I wanted to leave. I said I wanted to get your permission to take the, these bars off without hurting myself. Means I might have to smash these carts. But we like the but carts. They're fun. They're entertaining. Well, what if I can get you better food? Like a whole bunch of it. We can... I mean, can, aside from the cheap entertainment it provides you, they don't really do anything. And do, do you even use them? No. That's what I thought. There are six of these here rocks. And if I could find anything else like this, do, do you know if there's anything else like this around here? I have. I am a merchant, and this is a good product. And I swear to you, by if you can help me find what I am looking for, I will make sure that you have everything you need for this winter. Everything you don't even know you want. If we don't even know we want it, why would we want it? Because you ain't never had it before. If we've never had it before, why would we know to want it? Well... What if it'll be even better than anything you've ever had before? You know everything we've ever had before? Are you magical? You, well, are you in our heads? Eh, don't like that. Uh, no. Not that I'm in your head, but I... I see the way you're living. I see what's going on here. You live in the middle of nowhere and you scrap for what you get, right? Yeah, and it's a damn good cave. I ain't I ain't dissing your cave. <laughs> I'm just saying if you if you want more, why not get more? I bet you, you eat a lot of berries and 
bugs and other things. I just want to go in town and see if I can get you something better than this. Help you stock up and keep your bellies full for the winter. Look, if you're wanting to go into town and buy some food for us, you can take that bar. Well, here. One of them will come up to you and place a piece of amethyst gem in your hand. Go ahead and take that one with you as well. Really? Yeah, go. If you're going to go bring us food, go bring us food. Bring us back a bit now and we'll okay. see to it. Maybe you get your bar, those bars. All right. I'll do this. And maybe you might negotiate letting me search the rest of this here cave. Maybe. Food Maybe. first. All right. Okay. I decided to take them up on their offer. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an awareness check as you're heading out. You okay? I got I got a yeah, sixteen. Um out of eight. Oh. Okay. Uh you are able to make your way through. Um and they will let you out and you are now you have to go find a town to bring them food. <laughs> yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I feel like that might be a place to pa to put it on pause because I know Jacob said he needed to. Yeah. Catch yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Pretty soon. Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you for trying out the new this this new thing with me. Just yeah, yeah. it's been fun. Yeah. Wanted to try and figure out a new game mechanic because everything about it looked great. Looks great. Yeah. Now I've still got. I like it. Yeah, I've got eleven adventures still to go. Heck yeah. Uh, okay. We'll get to them eventually. <laughs> Maybe. To, to do this again. Yeah. I would too. Okay, well. Alright, well, I hope you all have a good night. Yep, I hope yep. you feel better soon, yeah. Jacob. You but too. I'm already starting to feel a little bit better, but, you know, it's just backlash from having two different sicknesses back to back kind of sucks. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Bye, everyone. Yep, see Bye, ya. Good night. Night. Bye, guys. Good night, see ya. Guys. Bye.